I feel like it took forever. It's been such a week. But we're back. Um, with just what I hope to be, uh, after we do a recap, a little something I'm going to reveal with what I hope to be a uh, fun miniature arc out here in the wastes of Iridu. Uh We're back after another week of many games of D&D. Um, many other things happening all around the world and all over our lives and most importantly, uh, you know, getting constant heat exhaustion. That's not fun. I really should stop that. Um, but enough about me. Uh, hi, someone tell me what happened last time we played the game. Anybody? Two entire weeks ago. <laughs> it does feel like forever ago. Nobody else is going to speak. Um, had breakfast with my dad. Mm -hmm. That was that was good. That was fun. Um, yeah, it's the only time you'll ever see Lithian react. Relax. <laughs> um, and then went and did some shopping for some winter gear. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's got Motel's boots. I met up with Dane to transport us to Iridu. Got dropped in an odd sort of chamber with a guard? Maybe? Mm -hmm. I think guard is even giving him too much credit. Yeah. Who, uh, Receptionist. Yeah. That's probably better. Yeah, receptionist, I think, is better. Who absolutely did not give a fuck about anything. At mm, least seemingly so. Especially about you guys being there. Especially about us being there. Um, then we tried to figure out how the hell an elevator works for a good 15 minutes. Which, honestly, um, that sounds not that interesting. It was probably my favorite part of the session. <laughs> Well, you made it complicated, okay? <laughs> I don't think I did at all. No, experiencing an elevator for the first time would be creepy if you'd never done it. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, we met up in the elevator with a strange lady who we asked to join us for some reason. Mm. Um, ran into some helpful people who taught us how the elevator worked. Two guards. Those were guards. Those were guards. Those were guards. Um, and they told us where to find a guide, which we followed their advice, again with strange girl in tow, and found a another not Khajiit Tabaxi. <laughs> yeah, wrong, wrong, wrong world setting. <laughs> I always get those backwards. I mean, um, and uh, hired them for our journey out oh and we're like known as suicide runners which i love i love that title mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because most of the people that willingly go onto the waste typically end up not coming back so they do it by choice and they end up killing themselves <clears throat> um anyone have anything else to, 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 to sprinkle in there it was actually pretty good pretty thorough oh. recap surprised it was actually really good yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> surprised I remember things. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying. Usually, it require it usually takes like like one or two people to get everything there, but that was pretty much that was a lot of everything. It's okay. I was surprised. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> Nothing else. Okay. Well then, uh, in which case, uh, we take you back to where you were just departing the uh, the tavern, uh, otherwise known as the saloon, uh, where you met Red in the Snow, your guide, your tabaxi guide, um, when there was no other call for goods or equipment. Uh, she said, uh, it would take only a short while for her to go collect her equipment before you could leave. So you're, you're just left in the saloon now. 
um, which honestly fits a very archetypal, like, Western saloon look. Two swinging doors enter the establishment, large round tables all around with many gruff-looking characters, long wide bar on the left, um, with a couple of people behind it, several uh, well-dressed enslaved elementals that are delivering drinks, uh, there's a piano playing itself in the corner, uh, and you are pretty sure there are also a couple of uh, various uh, races and sexual orientations of the night uh, wandering about looking for entertainment. Uh, given you guys have about, uh, I don't know, Red mentioned about 45 minutes to an hour, hour um, a little bit of time to burn, what would you like to do? Of which the answer could also be just wait. That's not fun. Like <clears throat> I'm gonna people watch and see if there's anybody interesting up to something weird to investigate. You're looking for weirdness, okay? Yeah. Sure, make me a perception check. Let's see if you notice anybody weird. I mean, is Hasbro there? Yep. He's weird. Nineteen. Um. Just kidding. Well, I mean, <laughs> looking around at the joint, um, everything feels pretty st stock standard, like just bar fare. There's a large table of which about six to seven people are, are currently playing a game of cards at, um, which the pot's getting relatively large, uh, a group of people off in the corner uh, that look like they're dressed uh, and, uh, in heavy winter clothes with bags of gear leaning up against the wall nearby, uh, looking like they're going to leave sometime soon, or just returning, but based off of the lack of snow, you think they're leaving, not going, or coming back. Um, there's a little bit of a, like some sort of hubbub up on the second floor, uh, which it's just, it's stairs that lead up to a railing uh, that just has a hall with several doors you can see. Um, and you can tell there's a little bit of a spat between um, a an elven woman, uh, pale skin, dark black hair, uh, and uh, what looks like a, honestly, it's strange, because they're not super common. Uh, it looks like a primal born of some kind, a, a Ganassi. Um, based off of the complexion of their skin, um, you suspect they're either an air or water primal born. Hard to tell. Other than that, there's really nothing overly interesting going on inside the bar. And unless somebody else pulls me in another direction, can I can I go gamble? <laughs> You're more than welcome to go gamble. Um, Martel, do you think we should get a map? Just you know, for safety reasons. We we let, we didn't really bring one with us, and I think a local map would be more accurate and current. Yes, I believe if there is a map available, it would be useful to have. Um, Lith Lithian, if you want to go and um, gamble, we're going to go that way and uh, possibly find a map. Have fun. Right back at you. Okay. Is there anyone here selling things to suicide squads? Suicide runners. <laughs> Two different runners. things. Sorry, right, yes. Of course. Uh, we're, we are not associated with that franchise? <laughs> of course not. I didn't um, work on it. I don't so have an NLA. Put it in the tags. <laughs> um, but if for some odd reason somebody out of the seven viewers that we occasionally have is working for, uh, you know, DC and wants to get us a sponsorship, I mean, I'm okay with changing the name. No, I've never worked for them yet. And, you know, I don't have any NOAs against me for that one, so I can talk about it. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, well, uh, if you recall, stepping back out of the saloon through the double wooden doors, uh, you are faced with what can be best described as an enormous flea market. Yep. This whole lower floor is just multiple different vendors and stalls with all kinds of eclectic vendors and goods to, accomp to accompany them. Of which uh, I mentioned really notably the, the first pass through, you know, like there was someone auctioning off an elemental that they had contained within a tube. Yes. 
I'm not going to touch on that. I don't want to carry an elemental in a breakable glass compartment in my pocket. Um, it was a big tube, but if you could fit it in your pocket, I'd be impressed. That's also valid. Um, hmm. Which side would the map makers be on? Or if there is just a stall that's selling a whole bunch of maps? Well, uh, given the two people that are with you, the way you find things is you either look around, investigation, or you ask around, persuasion, and see what you get. Well, I'll investigate. I'm sure Martel might want to ask around. Oh yeah, um, Martel's asking around. Yeah. Um, I got a one thirty-two. Thirty-two. Nice. Um, I don't mean to to outdo you, but I got a nat twenty for a total of thirty-five. Nice. I rolled a nineteen, so like I'm really not bombed. <sighs> you guys. <laughs> um. All right. Well, it's it's like one of those. You both sort of step outside, look around. No obvious. Uh, you know, indicators as to where you might buy some maps, and you both sort of just like head off in different directions. Martel kind of pulling over the first, uh, first knowledgeable looking stranger, and then Hasver just kind of like wandering around between stalls and sticking his head over like desks and looking at things, trying to find where there might be some maps located. Um, and it's kind of around like the same time where Hasvar, you, you just turn around the right corner. Uh, and then at the same time, you see Martel is now on the other side, having followed directions from a, a gentleman that she received. And you guys see that in between the two of you in the exact middle of this lane uh, is a uh, vendor stall that is just plastered uh, in all kinds of maps. It's it's eclectic and messy, almost like really loosely done wallpaper where it's like some of them are stuck up and most of them are partially curling. And if there was any space, one was stuck there behind it. Uh, and it's just a huge mess. But maps there are. I give it to you, Martel. I think you were 10 steps ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Martel just says, are there any maps available of the area? Um, <clears throat> we are going to... Hmm. One sec, let's check the notes. Um, we are going, is it the crystalline or is it the blazing amber? I, th I think it's uh, Zark Kalzar. I think that's correct, yes. That is we correct. We're going to Zark, Zark Kalzar. It's a V. Vark oh, sorry. Vark Kalzar. Oh. Um, all right. L lot of land between here and there. Um, we have some rough maps. Um, that uh, I could sell you. Um, they're only uh, so accurate, um, based off of uh, you know uh, eyewitness accounts for those that have, that have returned. Um, along with the fact that the landscape tends to change every so often, so they're only on a good day about sixty percent reliable. Uh, can I look through some of them while well, she asks questions? If she feels like. Uh, of course, um, I, we, I have maps from all around the world. Um, uh, areas uh, sp specifically to Irodu uh, will just be over there on the right side. Thank you. And he wanders over to the right. Mm -hmm. So, Miss, did you have Should any I questions? World map. You did. A very finely yes. made one. Yes, I have. A... You spent like a lot of gold on it. Yeah, I, I have it written down. High quality world map. Um, so yeah, no, uh, I, I mean, Martel would just make pleasant conversation. I don't think she has any specific questions. So okay. I'm, I'm okay. good. In which case, In we're which just case gonna... I, what is Hazard doing? Can I investigate and try and find a map that a either seems to have very specific markings? Um, in that, uh, sorry, I forgot the name already. Wow, bad memory. Um, in Vark Kalzar, uh, like area, hopefully, like a decent chunk of it, um, or one that is larger with like decent landmarks. Okay, so just to clarify, are you looking for a map that will, I mean, ideally, I, I know the answer would be both, but. Um, are you looking for a map that is displaying the land in which you are traveling between the two cities? Or are you looking for a map of the city that you're going to? 
or both. I am looking for uh, the the larger one first, and if I see the secondary one, that's also awesome. Okay. Um, one of the I guess one of the things that Hasvard likes to look for when he's looking at maps is to see if they have any um, cartographer markings in the sense of there might be something hidden here. This map has a marking on it. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, um, make an investigation check and we'll go from there. Cool. Great. Uh, 23. Okay. Pretty good. Um, my lowest. I know. It's still pretty good, though. The 23. Yeah. Yeah, that's valid. Um, yeah, uh, you spend a little time. Uh, kind of like parsing through these while Martel uh, maintains a polite conversation with the uh, the store owner. Um, you eventually uh, find um, a pair of maps, uh, one of which uh, looks to be the most detailed map of the area between um, this city and Varkelzar. Um, in that there's a lot of land between there and there. Um, and this one has about 20 or so various types of landmarks, uh, along with a couple of locations that are marked as previous locations where groups have camped or stayed at uh, for resting. Okay, so possible safe zones. Yeah. Um, um, how along much with, I, think- I was just going to add, along with... Uh, a couple of large areas that have been uh, draw- outlined, which uh, show, um, as denoted by a small little key written on the bottom right-hand side, uh, for um, uh, AM and WM for anti-magic and wild magic. And there are four zones that they've been able to highlight. Okay, cool. Um, how much would I think a map like this would go for? Just so I can come into it with like some... Uh, make, just make a charisma check. Let's see what your okay. appraisal. Let's see how how your appraisal skills do. Um. Well, not very well, and that's fine. Uh. It's a it's a nine because I rolled a six. That isn't great. Um. No, it's not. That being said, you already understand the value of a map because you so badly want to find one already. Um. You think the location which you're going into, they literally have people that they call suicide runners because so few of them return. Any valuable information that can be taken down and put onto a map and sold to people, you think is going to be charged a pretty penny for. Um, and that's just because that's reasonable, let alone the fact yeah. that they decide to upcharge more because, well, people need it. And if someone's trying to make money, that's how you do it. Um, so um, you don't think any of these maps are going to be cheap. Are we talking upwards of 100 gold? Uh, in that, probably in that range. You think anywhere between 15 gold to 100 gold, depending upon the level of detail. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. And what was the second map? Sorry. Uh, the second map is actually a... It's ru- it's much rougher than the first one. Uh, it is a rough, scrawled charcoal map uh, on a partially preserved piece of, um, like, waxed parchment that displays what looks like the outer... one of the outer gates of Vark Kalzar and some of the... Uh, uh, area surrounding the outside. Um, it looks to be like someone was trying to actually like make a map and notate um, how to enter into the city, but it seems they only got so far, uh, which was up to the gates before th- that. that's as much as the map was. Part of it is actually burned and singed around the top. Um, and it looks like uh, there's probably a couple of dark speckled spots of dried blood. Like the person was really interested in doing it, but it doesn't look like it ended up too well for them. That's unfortunate for them. Okay. Well, we, we've got two options, Martel. Because Ben, you heard it all. Ha-ha. Uh-huh. Yep. He explains uh, it. Wh- um, what do you think? Uh, Martel just kind of leans in and says, I do not have a hundred gold. Um, That's okay. I, I, I do. I, I try to not carry that much on my person. Well, it's more in like the, the up currency than gold because it's easier. Nods. Um, I do believe in high quality. Agreed. If you skimp on maps, it's 
usually bad. It's valid. Um, sir, how much for uh, uh, these maps? <clears throat> these two. Uh, well, uh, so the the tentative map of Vark Kalzar. Um, given the state it is in and the general lack of details, uh, probably go for about 15 gold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as for the other larger area map, um, it was brought in one by one uh, of, uh, the cartographers of the area, um, who does very good work. Uh, I charge 85 gold. It's not bad. Um... So, what do you say we make a deal? Uh, strike it at 90 and toss them both in even? Make a persuasion check? Disadvantage? Okay. You didn't really provide any incentive for him to drop the price other than, we're buying both. Might as well subtract money. That's valid. Uh, does uh, 23 work? Right up. All right, <clears throat> ninety for the pair. <clears throat> and right. odds are, if you don't make it back, you'll at least you, if you'll be following one of the more common maps, you'll probably find your remains. Oh, Means perfect. I'll get my map back. Uh, if we when we make it back, uh, can I sell it back to you for, say, uh, ten percent cheaper? Depends on the and condition. Sell it to the next person. Bring it back in good enough condition, condition, and we'll talk. All right, we'll see you up. Hasvark. Sticks out a hand. Right. Roland. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Roland. Reaches uh, over the, reaches over over the counter. Mm -hmm. Alright, there goes my plot. Uh, I mean, Martel will pay for part of it. Oh no, Martel, please. You, you and Lithian both have paid for more than enough things to keep me happy. I can at least pitch in to keep you safe. Uh, also, is... Do you throw in a map case with these to keep them safe in the snow? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And uh, reaches you. behind him, pulls out a leather scroll tube, and uh, passes it over. Rolls them both up, puts them in. It was, it was a pleasure doing business with you, Roland. Mm -hmm. Hope to see you soon. Hope to see you soon, too. Suicide Runners out! Bye. And he, I just like to imagine Hazard dabs and then runs away. Yeah, it was actually a fist pump upwards, but yes, oh, pretty okay. much. Yeah. I mean, it's Hazard. He's like an awkward dad. I think yeah. it should be a dab. A dab. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's the only people left who dab anymore. It's true. <laughs> it is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Fade to black. Scream goes back to Lithian. And uh, yep. Tijira possibly went with her? Yeah, Tijira didn't go anywhere, so I'm assuming Tijira is still behind Lithian on some level. I hope so. Well, Lithian. Um, I'm assuming you're heading over to the card table? Yep. Okay. Uh, we're going to do uh, something really simple. Uh, we're going to do, uh, essentially, uh, you're going to sit down, uh, the card game, uh, you're going to need a pair of D6, uh, and the, uh, we've done this before, you're going to roll a D6, you're going to keep the numbers to yourself, I'm going to roll D6 for the corresponding card players, uh, and then you're, you're basically, uh, uh, you're either raising or staying, um, until, uh, the flop happens and you determine who the winner is. So I'm rolling 1d6 at a time? No, 2d6 at once. Okay. Got it. And uh, the, the people at the table uh, literally don't even bat an eye when you come over and, like, grab a chair and sit down. It just, they just kind of, and once the next hand goes out, they just immediately deal you in. You think it probably has something to do with your attire and that the fact that you they think you can definitely afford to gamble some. <laughs> In fact, I'm just gonna use it. I'm gonna use a dice roll. I just need a bunch of pairs. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, this is where bets go in. Uh, starting bet is one gold. Am I starting? Yes. Okay. For the sake of simplicity. I will raise it to three gold. Okay. Uh, the guy sitting next to you... Hmm. Uh, he's just going to put in a gold. It just kinda, it's just going to pass around the table. Uh, you have... Uh, one person who bets very confidently, betting five, um, and then everyone else is a middling between uh, one and two. Let me try to get my numbers right. Okay. Um, and now is the opportunity, if you would like, to re-roll one of your d6s. Okay. Okay, well, after that, uh, three people fold. Uh, and there are two people left. Uh, one of which was the gentleman who bet five, and another one of which was one of the guys at the end who bet two. Uh, the bet will start with you, Lithian. This is the final I... bet before flop. I will match the confident bet from before. Five gold. Okay. Um, it'll go to him next. Uh, he will match. Uh, and it'll go to uh, the third player, and he will. Uh, he'll bet eight, bringing you all to at least an even contribution of ten gold pieces each, roughly. Seems very confident in his hand. All right. All right, so, uh, Flop, what do you have? Twelve. All I just right. sent a picture to the chat. Yeah, no, I believe you. Uh, I totally believe you. <laughs> um, it was a nine and an eleven. So, Lithian, you will win. I rolled that on the first one. <laughs> wow, nice. Yeah. Whew. So yeah. we're getting all of our good ones out of the way, guys. Let me just uh, tally up the, the money real quick. Um, so you profit 24 gold. So you, you put eight in, you make 24. Cool. How many hands do you want to do? Oh, let's just do one more so that we can move on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, this round's going to look a lot more interesting. To keep things interesting, um, we're going to we're going to start with a uh, uh, someone else betting first. Uh, the first guy only puts a gold in. Uh, the second guy uh, leads with five. Third guy goes in with three. The fourth guy goes in with five. Uh, and the last guy leads in with two. What would you like to bet? I'll throw in three again. Mm -hmm. All right. Now is your chance to re-roll if you desire.
All right. Do you have your you have your number? Yep, I do. All right. Um, I'll give you the bets in a moment. Have to uh, retabulate who all folded. We had two folds. Uh, in three bets, uh, we had a bet of three gold, a bet of five, and a bet of two. Uh, the three gold came from the gentleman that bet five in the opening hand. Um, the guy that bet five bet three was the one that bet three in the beginning, uh, and then we had a bet of two uh, from uh, the third, the, the second guy that bet five in the first round. All right, I will throw in an, another three. Okay. And the flop. Ten. Ten. Well, you were not as lucky this time. There was a uh, a chap who got a one and a six, and then re-rolled the one into a six. Oh, he was I the guy. The one and a six, and re-rolled the one into a four. <laughs> ah, well, his luck held out a little bit better. Um, Damn. But I mean, that only cost you six gold. Uh, which means you still walked away with 18. And that's how you do Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily uh, enough, you and the guy that just won ended up netting the same amount of gold. Interesting. Yeah. I will just hang around and chat with these folks uh, until our friends come back. All right. Yeah. I mean, they're... To they're wants to they're amenable. Mm -hmm. You know, you've always got a couple of talkative players, um, and after a sort after a certain point, you know, just like talking them, you start to realize that oh yeah, some of them have a couple of really obvious tells. One of which they one won't shut up when given the opportunity to talk. <laughs> okay, uh, Tajira, anything in in particular you want to do? No, she's gladly watching from the sidelines. Okay. Um, Hasvard and Martel, uh, anything out in the marketplace you wanna wanna glance at before you uh, go back to the saloon? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I'm gonna be listening to see if there's any good uh, deals for magic potions again, because like that's always a a good in, but I don't think I have the cash for it. The deals might be really good. Exactly, that's why I'm I'm throwing it out there. Uh, make a perception check for me, Hasbro. <laughs> uh, sixteen. <laughs> yes. Okay. My best roll of the night. Not actually, it's my second best, but still. Uh, unsurprisingly. Uh, you do know there. You do hear a couple of uh, a couple of. Uh, oh, geez, what are they called? Hawkers. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I was thinking hawker. That was the first word that came to mind, but it's not the one I'm thinking of. It doesn't matter. But yes, you you hear a couple of hawkers, and unsurprisingly, uh, of which that are all tied to potion sell, uh, potion sales, due to the fact that you think well, demand is probably high here, uh, and so there are uh, quite a bit, um, but off the cuff when you when you hear prices start getting listed on some of them while they seem competitive um they are still pretty much within the normal price range for uh most standard potions um so just to remind the base costs for most the base cost for the first level is 50 and then 125 250 425 650 you're basically mm -hmm. looking at a, about a 25 percent markup here which is surprisingly cheap uh, given the uh, the need you suspect comes out of this place, that's valid. I'm I'm gonna wait until we come back with some loot to sell. But, but there is one potion place that is promising rare and unusual potions at extraordinarily cheap prices. I feel like this is how you get poisoned. I'm not even gonna roll an insight on this. <laughs> like. Martel, you obviously hear this too, but... Or if you don't, hey Martel, they're talking about some strange potions. Makes me weirded out, dude. Yeah. 
tells like, oh yes, um, sometimes people like potions that do different things. Not everything heals. That's valid. Some of it gets us drunk. Okay. Um. Let's just go back to the party. Well, uh, Martell would be keeping an eye open because this is kind of a new place. Mm -hmm. Somewhere she's never been before. Um, she's suspecting, despite everybody being like, oh, it's full of monsters, that there will be a great deal of boredom that comes from being in a frozen wasteland for many days. Um, she's going to keep an eye out for, like, unique uh, furs or uh, cloth or materials that she could maybe make some new outfits with. If she has oh. some spare time while wandering a frozen wasteland. All right. Uh, well, uh, same as before. You can make a perception check, and you can make it one of your fancy charisma ones. Ooh, exciting. One of your, one of your performance ones. I love a lot of people here. A lot of people. Uh, 34. <laughs> yeah. Martel yeah, yeah, yeah. Life dice love Martel. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is really easy, because like this is about reading people. So Martel when you're just sort of walking along, just sort of taking in all the sights, sounds, and smells. Um, it's really easy to spot the handful of people that you can tell spend money on their appearance and sort of follow where they kind of go as you're sort of passing by on, like, corresponding, uh, uh, like, lanes and uh, thoroughfares. And you see them sort of stop at a couple of occasional spots. But you do notice that there are some stores, uh, some vendor stalls that are on display uh, selling just huge cuts of fur uh, and some uh, unusual uh, hides and fabrics. Uh, pardon me, my Discord just died. Um, we're just gonna wait for that to fix itself. Da -da 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 -da. Sorry, everybody. On I'm here. RTM dropped. Yay, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. Welcome back. What happened? Uh, Discord decided to stop working for a second. You know, just Discord things. Causing do Discord. Them. Discord does just do that. Sometimes. But here we are. Um, here we are. So yes, a, a stall with um, several large uh, um, cuts of uh, multi-pattern fur. Um, one of which looks strikingly like your guide. Um, red in the uh, snow uh, with a white and black spotted pattern. Um, there are a couple of uh, large pieces of uh, worked hide and leather. Um, and uh, there are a couple of spools of fabric, but those are uh, on the slightly... Uh, there are less offerings in, in regard to fabric. Right. Uh, yeah, Martel will go over there. Um, speak, oh, these furs are beautiful. What animals do they come from? Oh, you have a fine eye. Well, this over here comes from a glacial stalker. A creature that, well, as its name implies, stalks the frozen wastes, looking for any unsuspecting adventurers uh, that might not be paying any attention. Uh, they are people hunters and very dangerous. But likewise, uh, their fur and hide uh, make expert uh, armor and clothing uh, for traveling in areas such as these. Hmm. That is good to know. Does it take anything special to work? Well... I am a capable seamstress, but if it is hard like armor, I am not sure I could work with it. Ah... Uh. The, the fur, perhaps, uh, you might be able to use. The hide would require uh, some skill with a leather working. Kind of nods along. Yes, um, unfortunately, I do not know any capable leather workers. Well, I, I do know one, but I doubt he would. Anyways, um, I, I would love to sample these furs we're going on a i believe everybody calls them suicide runs 
and mm. I think there will be some downtime. I design all my own outfits, and this fur I have is inspiring. How much? How much would you need? As she kind of looks at it, thinks it through, figures if she's making one for herself, Lithian might also want one. <laughs> um, estimates yes. the cost of, you know, the fairly small form of Martell and the mm -hmm. fairly large form of Lithian, and gives the proper amount of whatever yards or however they sell it, mm -hmm. pelts that she needs. Which I will leave to you, DM, because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of, a lot of, a lot of up in the air for that. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. The the tabaxi at the stall just kind of gives you a once over, considers all the information you provided. Ah, <sighs> for an amount of that, for how about since you are so daring as to enter into the wasteland. 35 gold for your needs, and if you bring any more back, I will buy it from you at a uh, higher than normal cost for your trouble. That sounds like a very fair deal. Thank you. Um, and she will hand over the gold, and keep in mind that if she can get some hides slash furs, she knows where to sell them. Mm -hmm. Um, I am nearby listening to this, right? Uh, I assume. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Unless you're distracted by something else. Martel would just. I am Martel. If I could get your name, so I can return more easily. Of course. I am known as Sharpclaw. Kind of does like a hand gesture, and you see the claw, the claws of the tabaxi sort of spring out and then go back in. Uh, she she just smiles at him. Wonderful, thank you. This has been a very good transaction. You are a savvy businessman. I always appreciate them. Hmm. Excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing you again. Hopefully, with um some more business to be had. Anything unique and pretty, I will be sure to send it your way. Very good. Um, and yeah, Martel, buy those. I'll mark off the. It was thirty-five gold. Yep. Mark off the thirty-five gold. To do. All right. Yeah, but I think that's about it for Martel's shopping in this area. She already has winter clothes and I think I... a climbing kit was something I bought. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I ask a logistical question? Yep. Um, are we, is this open air or are we inside? You guys are inside a large, you don't know what it looks like on the outside, but everything's enclosed. You've not seen the outside okay. of this place yet. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure I was imagining it right. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of the major cities on Iridu are large enclosed places. All right. Well, before we head back, any last little pieces you guys want to kind of gander at? Like, I'm I'm, I, I know we could probably look at trinkets, but I want to get back to the group. Very well. All right. You all eventually make it back to the saloon. Uh, we see Lithian sitting at a table, uh, engaged in what seems to be a, a relatively lively conversation with a handful of the players at this table that are kind of playing cards, throwing cards in, throwing gold coins in. It seems very leisurely and lax. It's not that intense of a game, even though the stakes for an average card game seem pretty high. Um, after you guys all kind of have a moment of settling in and uh, waiting, 
uh, snow, uh, not too long after you, only a couple of minutes, uh, trails in behind, uh, dressed in a set of uh, white and gray leathers uh, with a heavy fur-trimmed cloak, uh, a longbow strapped across uh, their back, um, and a uh, several blades uh, that are just uh, hanging off of their uh, their belt and their hip. Uh, they just kind of prop the hood down and uh, look across the other room and then just with a paw gestures all of you for, to, uh, for you to come. I guess that's our cue. Yeah, we'll gather up. Oh, just out of curiosity, the handmaiden, did she just kind of follow Hasbard and I around? Did she remain at the table? Uh, she What'd followed She, she followed you, Marta. Yeah, I figured. She kept a right. respectful distance away and just hasn't said a thing. Okay. Cool. Right. Check it in on that. But yes, Martel will gather. Snow will gather you outside the saloon. And we'll begin walking in a uh, direction that is uh, on the western side of this uh, this place. The saloon, for your uh, for your own information, is located on the north. So you begin heading along one another the uh, of the flat faces of this uh, the city, heading west. So, did you gather everything you needed? You ready to go face what is surely to be a um, most interesting trip? Yeah. Ready as I will ever be. What the young lady said. Oh. <clears throat> How many of you are uh, accustomed to Arctic temperatures? Uh, Martel puts up her hand. I can handle them pretty well. Good. Because I'm a Good day, you're expecting something in the realm of minus, minus 20 if the sun is out. And when the night falls, it dips even lower than that, sometimes into minus 40 or 50. Shelter is the most important thing we can find. Just need to be aware that if you cannot survive, do not think of being brave by stepping outside the city now. No sense having a, a useless death on our hands. What, what about a pointful death? Like, what did you say? What about a pointful death? It's a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> you must have many kids. Yes. But also no, but yes. <laughs> And they're wonderful. Do you have children? Me? N no. N none. <clears throat> I wouldn't dare do this kind of work and have a family. Yeah, it's kind of harshing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just gives you a big toothy smile. Like, yep. Once you say it, it becomes very obvious. Yep. And you do, when you have elected to come here. Why is that? <sighs> Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we talk about it on the road. Hmm. Very well. From the stories I've thought maybe heard, or the way Martellus reacted, um, guides aren't like the most... Yeah. I'm learning to keep secrets, guys. Was it's that in character or out of character? <laughs> out of character a little okay. bit, sorry. <laughs> like man, that was that was kind of a <laughs> rude thing to say out loud. But I thought it just me check. Sorry, yeah. I swear I'm learning. <laughs> I'm proud uh, of you. I love that you're so sneaky yet can't keep your mouth shut. <laughs> um after about walking for twenty minutes or so, this place is enormous you're really just getting a scope for how large of an interior this is. 
after walking through for about 20 minutes or so, uh, you come to a huge set of double metal doors. They're currently closed, but there is a long line of people that have queued up. Uh, some of that are coming in and some of that are going out. And there are um, just a whole company of the Cobalt Rose, uh, the guards, that are currently just handling, uh, you know, uh, in and outs uh, between all the various people here. Uh, snow comes up, walking right past all of the lines, uh, kind of raises up a uh, part of the cloak, um, where you see underneath there is a, a, a small, uh, like blue gray metal, uh, star, like an eight pronged star. And you see the guard just kind of nod, uh, they put it back and then they, uh, open up a small door. Uh, inside one of the larger doors, and uh, S Snow just waves for you to keep following. <clears throat> Don't mind the locals. Just a lot of in and out salvagers and the like. Trying to make a living off of what is safer nearby the cities. Keeps us pretty busy. How many um, guiding trips do you do in a month? Ah, it varies. A an average month, probably about uh, two or three. On a bad month, six or seven. I'm sorry. Ah, don't apologize to me. Tell it to the poor saps that they're uh, lost somewhere out there in the wastes, being gnawed on. Or worse. So... Just so we know, what are the, the clauses is in um, how bad is the situation that you're going to just disappear in? If there is no one left to save, I will be gone. But I will do everything in my power to try to preserve your lives. Oh, appreciate that. Yes, I won't die for you. No, nor are we asking you to. I know this place well, and you wouldn't be hiring me if you did. So I will do everything I can to uh, ward you from all the dangers and creatures that are lurking out here. Um, and should it prove to be too great, uh, or if I feel like uh, you as a group uh, will not be capable of surviving for as long as the trip is necessary, I will turn us around. Roll that inside. Check. Eleven. Seems honest. Sound, honestly, it sounds a bit like a routine. Like, this isn't yeah. the first time Snow has had to say this to people. Businessman. I appreciate your candid. Cool. Uh, well, you do this enough. And uh, you have to set expectations. A lot of people come here with uh, grander ideas of heroics or riches, and sometimes uh, their ego gets uh, bigger than their actual ability. No, we understand that we might be smushed flat. Mm, I mean, well, you, you, yes, perhaps. The others, uh, probably require a trampling of, um, numerous, n numerous entities. <laughs> Unless you're unfortunate enough to stand in front of a mammoth, but in which case, if you see it coming and don't move, you deserve it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lithian is um, laughing out loud in character. <laughs> I do have a small extra request, if you are willing. We bought a couple of maps. I would really appreciate it if you helped us to keep updated on where we are. Hmm. You know, I'll do my best. We stop for rests. Honestly, if you could look it over with me uh, tonight or at some point, that would be amazing. Yes. Just so that we could get your information as well. As it's I possible. said, I know the areas, and uh, um, I don't know what, uh, which maps you've uh, purchased, but uh, I do I do help with uh, several of the cartographers that work out of the city. Um, so m much of my input has already uh, probably been put into some, some of the maps, but uh, nothing quite uh, works as well as... Uh, first-hand experience yes which we're going to get indeed you are 
And uh, that now brings me uh, to the thing that I've been working on. For any of you that have played Slay the Spire, this is, in this is inspired by. I love it. What is, what's going on? <gasps> yeah. Cool. Ooh. Oh, this is cool. I'm excited. So I wanted the trip to Vark Kelzar to be a little bit more than just like, ah, yeah, you overland, you run into one or two things. Um, and, you know, it's going to take you a while. Uh, I figured, because um, that system's really cool. Uh, and slay the spire. So I figured this would be a way to sort of uh, kind of emphasize this and really give you guys an opportunity to uh, pick and choose your own way to get there. Um, uh, I will briefly explain because I didn't input a key, uh, but I think everything is almost self-explanatory. It's probably not entirely, but let's say so. We're just going to start. I'm going to use the examples in the bottom right corner. Uh, the little the little, you know, slitty eye boys with the, the fires monsters. Now, a monster encounter doesn't necessarily mean a combat. It could just mean seeing and observing something and then spending time avoiding it if that was your desire. Or it could just be you fighting and killing a monster. Um, the trees are exploration based. Uh, therefore, it could be something interesting you saw from the distance and you want to investigate uh, something buried in ice or snow uh, or any other potential environmental hazards. Um, and then, of course, the little per peopley ones are uh, social encounters, aka uh, encounters with humanoids, uh, which could like also likewise also turn into combat or not, depending upon how it's handled. Um, and no matter what you do, all of these um, can have effects based off of how I've explained to you uh, here in Iridu for wild magic effects and anti-magic fields. Um, I will note some of these uh, for which of them will absolutely have those effects in place due to the fact that you've purchased the map that has a couple of markers on it. Thank you. So ask. you will know a couple of locations that will have wild magic effects active in an area where you go there and um, uh, anti-magic effects when you go there. Um, and then the, the little fireplaces, uh, the little little campfires here and here, and then there uh, there's uh, two more above, um, are your places of rest. It's where you're, you are going to take a long rest for that day. Um... And of course, you have you can you can choose to alter your course when you reach any of the positions where they branch off. So you could technically try to make a day shorter uh, if you wanted, um, or you could try to make a day longer if you wanted to keep pressing on. Uh, but the idea is you could see the pass ahead of you. You know what's on. You know what's on the list. Um, I will tell you that each each branch, each pathway has its own little mini narrative uh, and mini story arc in it. So hopping between them, you will be jumping partway through into a narrative that has occurred further down on the branch. Um, I do have a question. Yeah. The, you can only jump up on the branchers, right? Yes. Okay, sweet. Just wanted to double check. Have you played? Yes. Oh, yeah. Good. So good. I'm so excited. Yeah, so I figured this would be a cool way to do it. Uh, if this goes well, I'll probably do this for a lot of my other, uh, like, you know, uh, air quotes like dungeony areas, uh, so that way you guys can sort of just piecemeal your own uh, dungeon together. Probably. System might get refined, but I just I had this idea earlier this week, um, and I uh, put this together uh, earlier today. So very pretty. This is um, cool. As you guys are uh, brought through these uh, small metal corridors. Um, on either side of you, there are these long glass windows that peer into just these huge cavernous tunnels, uh, which you can see there are people uh, through on either side. Some are walking along the same pathway you are heading out, and there are several coming inside with uh, numerous carts, um, several of which uh, don't have wheels and are just seemingly hovering off the ground. Um, and they're just bringing in all kinds of like uh, huge piles of metal scraps uh, one of which looks like it has a, a carcass of a butchered mammoth. Uh, there are groups of uh, warriors and soldiers and guardsmen coming back in, uh, some of which actually look like they've seen combat and are hurt and bloodied. Um, it looks like a, a hell of a time outside. At the end of this very long corridor you are in, uh, you reach a door, uh, snow opens it for you, and on the other side you are in what is what looks like a large hangar room. Uh, it's about 40 feet tall, uh, and in front of you, it is just an enormous metal door. Uh, and off to the sides, that same glass, uh, the same glass slit that ran along the, the 
hallways on the left and right of you when you were going down the corridor, run into this room right up to the metal door. So you can kind of just glance outside and see uh, just the vast white tundra beyond that is awaiting you. It is currently uh, in the middle of a mild snowstorm. Um, upon seeing that, you just immediately see snow prop the hood up uh, over their ears and then turn around. <clears throat> well, I hope you are all ready. It is uh, looking like a lovely day for, for a hike. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, all of you have access uh, to move the, the little token uh, circle boy here. Um, amongst yourselves, uh, decide which path you want to start on. Quick question. Yeah. Do the uh, golems count as the, P the humanoids or the monsters? Monsters. Yeah, uh, so yeah, the people are humanoid strictly. Sentient, speaking humanoids. Uh, so, like, even instances of sentient uh, humanoid-shaped creatures, like a good instance of this would be yetis. Those are monsters. They might be intelligent, and they might be capable of speaking, but they're under the monster category. Anything that is humanoid that you could find walking around in a city anywhere else in the world is going to be a person encounter. Um, oh. where are the wild magic zones? Just so that yes. we, like, is there any early Thank ones you. that we have to be worried about? Thank you for reminding me. Uh, what's that appropriate? I'm going to use this teal color, or, or the cyan color for wild magic. Uh, the good news is, wild magic doesn't really begin to occur until quite a further way in the tree. Oh. oh no, there's no way to get to the city without wild magic. And then, <laughs> surprise, <laughs> uh, color for anti -mag. Um, Purple. All right, it's purple. Purple yes. will be anti -mag. It was Agatha all along? It was Agatha uh, all along. It's Agatha all along. Cue <laughs> the music. God, I love that song. Anyway. It, it's very catchy. You know, they, they, they turned it in MP3 and have like sold it on like every music streaming site that exists. You, you think I haven't been listening to it on Spotify? Really? All right. I, I, well, I, I just I just feel like saying it out loud. So everyone knows. I don't know why I'm plugging Disney content on my stream, but I'm not officially <laughs> sponsored, but I happily would be. Hashtag so. <laughs> Disney, give us money. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. Uh, nice try. Okay, oh. so CN is wild magic, purple is anti magic. Well, can we get one with both and they cancel each other out? No. <laughs> um. <laughs> I like I, I like I like the way you think, but that just isn't how it works. That's actually <laughs> all of the ones that aren't squared off. That's what happened there. Ah, see. So, rune surprise. Just so I remember correctly, campfires are places where we get to rest, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Campfire is a long rest. All right. Then I strongly suggest we do not start on the right path, because if we go to that first right path campfire, we are then stuck in a massive gauntlet until yep. our yeah. next long rest. Like That's definitely one of the most difficult sections. The other problem is that if we want to avoid that very difficult section, um, we have to veer off on that path and then turn the first round into a massive gauntlet until our first short rest. So, so I, I think I'm, the I'm, right path is the most difficult, yeah. just objectively speaking. Agreed. I think the middle path with a branch off to the right is the easiest one, at least from what I'm seeing. Yeah, the uh, least so encounter filled one. Yeah, as a group, do we think we think wild magic is much more dangerous than anti magic, right? Given that, uh, none uh, of speak for yourself, that's foul. Uh, yeah, <laughs> don't speak for me. 
<laughs> they, they so, oh, we can't speak about that. <laughs> but I do agree, like, middle up to this, like, there, there. So once we hit here, are we going left and doing two encounters, or are we going through the wild and anti-magic? I would go like that. I feel like a conversation for when we get there and what our stats are at that point. Yep, valid. <laughs> also an option. Um, you don't yeah, you don't have to decide right away how you finish it start to finish right now. Just where you're starting. Yeah. I'm, I'm just kinda middle. looking at the start. I vote middle. Vote middle. Mm-hmm. Alright. Well that 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 says it because Tim also voted middle. I mean if it's purely a democracy, sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean in I... character, Martel doesn't understand democracy and is always <laughs> confused. Out of character, I understand democracy and agree with it. I'm also very willing to listen to other options. I'm not dead set, but I, my vote currently is for middle. Like there, there's not really much else to discuss except for the fact that we have a short rest within the first three if we're going the middle route. So we could technically do the two combats. But what would be the point of that other than to have two combats? So, yeah, and if I didn't clarify, the rest stops are long rests. Mm-hmm. Yes. They are days. Every 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 everything in between the campfires is a day. Yeah. That's perfect because by the end of this I'll have my horn back. Oh, exciting. Yeah. In case yeah. it goes really bad when you get to the city. Mm-hmm. 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 Um yeah, and no, you can't go the... down on a branching path, right? Correct. No. Like I, we couldn't veer to the left, you no. know, if we went middle. Correct. Right. We would if we go in the middle. We are going straight up the middle until the the branch to a human or a tree, because we can't do the one on the left where the tree is either. That's All right, well, again, the people seem committed to the middle. Like, well, I mean, do. we could do this, and that would be, like, avoid anti-magic, but we would have two encounters. But a long rest. Two encounters and then a long rest. Yes. Instead, we're having one encounter and... Well, well they're be. all encounters, right? Like yeah, yeah. All of, it's just not all of these things. Monster encounters. Yes, all of these things are meant to consume party resources. I think that's the best yes. way to explain how each one of these is is bullet. All of these are meant to use party resources. Did Did you hear what? I... No. I so I don't know if I missed anything, but what no. I said was, according to like what CJ said too. The encounters might not actually be combat. They yeah, like I said, yeah. Stops oh, with of monsters course. and stops with people might not be combats. It could be just like observing a really cool thing, or it could be even uh, like, oh man, look at that family of mammoths. Oh, that baby mammoth is stuck. Let's go save the baby mammoth. It could literally be that. Um, or it could exactly. be a stampede of mammoths, or it could be a, a group of primordial energy infused mammoths that are just on a complete rabid rampage. Or That's the point. All of it's squirrel. random. Um, that just wants a nut. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've never experienced Drunk Martel with the anti magic, though, Sarah. I was going to say. Yeah, no one, here, no one here has. Yeah. No one here so has like, experienced it that. It. Um, yeah, so what? let's go through that middle. I mean, that's what I was about to say, is out of character, I would more advocate for the starting on the the left path, because anti-magic does some crazy stuff to me, but... You tell us that? No, Martel wouldn't tell you that. Then we don't know. But we're planning out a character right now. Planning out a character, though. I know. Uh... Um... I don't know why. Do you guys want to take a break and keep talking? I I, I guess. I'd be down for two encounters. Or two two monsters. 
Let's say the more I'm looking at it, you know, starting the left, skipping that anti-magic. I'm cool with that. Okay. As much as um, I'd like to optimize my social encounters, um, <laughs> I have other concerns. Well, if we're doing that, then we get a choice here after a second one, whether we need to rest or have a personal or yeah. a human. So I think that's a good idea. I like that idea. Okay. I mean, again, I, I'm not trying to force anybody. That was just my two cents on the matter. So I think that no. I, I like the left path. Because the right path, we're kind of committed pretty hard as well. Yeah. Or, sorry, the I middle think... path. We're committed pretty hard, mm -hmm. same as right path. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas the left path, we've got some options when we get to our third encounter. Yeah. At least, so, I mean, skipping the encounter with the anti I think, is important. So, yeah. Going through the exploration with the anti-magic is going to be interesting, but hopefully not extremely dangerous. I mean, fair warning, everything here is pretty dangerous. Yeah, pretty, I figured. Pretty, with different degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. But I figured I'd give the uh, the warning clause of, uh, you know, um, you guys are level 14. Uh, this is a really ancient place. Um, everything here is probably on a scale of like one to ten dangerous. The, the lowest you'll ever see is probably a six. Reasonable. And the closer you get to the city, the worse it gets. Yeah, I figured that. Which is why we should hopefully try and go for the right branch if we can uh, at the end. Are we going to meet a time-eating beast? But the, the left path is the most probably optimal to stay away from anti-magic for as long as possible. Um, Throw it up so you guys can see. And like, again, I, I'm down for whatever everybody wants to do. I was just, I, I heard everyone vote for the middle. Yeah. Well, well, we again, have... this is a discussion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> also, no right or wrong answer. Uh, I think that we've come to we're starting on the left though right like we can make the branch decisions when we get there but we're starting on the left yeah mm -hmm. okay i'm fine with that okay are we locking that in, locking it in. yeah I'm locking it in is that your final <laughs> answer is that your final answer yeah the answer regis Okay, uh, while someone else continues to doodle, um, we are going to take a short break here. And uh, we're going to come back. I, it's going to be like, you know, almost a 10 minute, like, so like 45 ish past. But if you can get there back here sooner, we can start sooner. You know, one of those. Okay. Cool. Cool. Julio. No, that's a drink. <laughs> I thought it was a person. It's both. both. Wait, so is that a tall drink of <laughs> Why the size? These jokes are fantastic. I also think some of our jokes are fantastic. Some of. <laughs> I both like them and hate them at the same time. <laughs> See, that's the proper reaction. <laughs> I, I disagree. I think the proper reaction to good puns is that you like them. The proper reaction to bad puns is that you don't like them. <laughs> Fair. If you like and hate them, it means it's a mediocre pun. And that's just... It's just bad business. Mediocre. I didn't mean to insult you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not That's insulted. not what I thought I was doing. Not you. Because <laughs> I just said I like and hate the joke, and then you were like, mediocre is really bad. And I'm like, oh god, I didn't mean to insult 
Oh, no, no. I was meaning to insult. That's where that oh. was going. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you didn't do anything wrong. I was pu <laughs> pushing Tim's buttons. I'm almost done inking these dice. I think I'll be done before our first encounter. Well, that's Later. exciting. Yeah, oh, I'll that send was a bad idea. Once I'm done with them, because they look, I mean, just adding the silver ink changes them so much in an interesting way. Yeah, love to see your inked in dice. I hate yes. doing this. I really hate inking dice, but I accidentally bought the uninked ones, so I suffer. Thankfully, you know, I have people that like to do artistic things for me. You like the, uh, guess, the squid on Finding Nemo? Sorry, continue. No, no, I was just gonna say, if I get uninked dice, I have a friend who loves to paint miniatures and stuff that I'm like, hey, you wanna ink my dice? And he's like, yes! <laughs> I thought, for a second, I thought you meant your kids. <laughs> no. <laughs> my kids uh, are pretty artistic. But, but not in the right way. <laughs> well, they're still young. Like a, yeah. they, she wouldn't. Still my have daughter the fine wouldn't skills. have yeah the fine motor skills, and my son wouldn't have any interest, and is also even younger. So yeah. But one day, maybe one day. One day. One day more. <laughs> I just, ugh. I noticed that I bought the uninked one immediately after I checked out. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I could have customer service, but that's another email chain I have to reply to. Mm. You know? Drive a limited email chains. Yes. I well, I understand. Talking to people is probably the worst thing in the world. I literally talk to people for a living, so yeah, I avoid it as much as possible on my <laughs> hmm. Understand. The whole reason I probably won't pursue this rent thing is because it's $450. I'm already gone. I don't really care. Man. It sucks, but like sometimes if you can just afford to take the loss, it's not worth the hassle. It's. It's gonna say. I was to be at a point where four hundred and fifty dollars meant that little to me. Well, okay. The, it's not that it means that little. It's that I wasn't planning to get it back anyways. Got Tim Bezos over here. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Yes, I can own a city. Don't talk to me about my city, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he owns Seattle. Um, kind of. Kind of. You know, if he didn't, then we would, you know, have our fucking billionaires that live here pay corporate taxes, but they don't. So, you know. He did plant know. his balls firmly in the middle he of your city. He did plant his balls in my city. Yes, he did. Ugh, that man. <laughs> I've returned. Slightly out of breath. Place. Did you go for a jog? Kind of. I was uh, trying to get Daisy uh, zooming around the house so Kayla could take her out back to play with her. And uh, <laughs> she's very much into the uh, chase her one way. I run into another room, hide behind a corner, and she comes to try to find me, and then I spook her away and chase her. It's a lot of fun. Lurkard, I don't actually fun. spook her. I just, you know. Very cute. It is. Oh. <sighs> To help my breathing, I'm going to eat this candy bar. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Good idea. Mm -hmm. I was just enjoying a nice peanut butter cup. Mm, nice. This is toffee covered in chocolate. Delicious. Uh, no, not a Reese's. Um, at the risk of having everybody hate me. I don't really like Reese's peanut butter cups. Um, yeah, I enjoy I the President's Choice brand peanut butter cups. See, I've always liked the Reese's Pieces better. Me too. And oh, Reese's Pieces are amazing. Yeah, Nobody's yeah. going to argue against that. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I, Reese's Pieces is no, great. No, don't no, like cups. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> Fuck those things. Peanut butter is disgusting. Reese's well, Pieces fine. Nobody yeah. who likes peanut butter will argue against it. <laughs> I'm okay with like a little bit of peanut butter. I find a peanut butter sandwich to be well, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just a little bit too much some of the time. Mm, you just put less me. peanut butter on it. I do. I do. Do you? I even we were like myself my chonky peanut butter so that I can have even more of it. Mm. That's disgusting. I do like chunky peanut butter. Chunky peanut Why? Butter. Peanuts, peanuts are wrong. Peanuts and <laughs> nuts in general are wrong, okay? They don't taste good. <laughs> I love nuts in my mouth. I think they taste great. Great tongue feel. Everything about it is wonderful. Tongue feel is a measurement I was not expecting. Huh. Wine tasters have, like, mouth feel. Yep. I hate, mouth I hate feel this. is a thing. Mm-hmm. In fact, the reason babies and children are so particular about what they eat tends to come more from the fact that they have more sensitive, they're more sensitive to textures than we are as adults. Hmm. That's interesting to know. The same reason why I dislike coconut. It's more important than, yeah. Than you dislike coconut for the... The texture. Same reason why I hate pineapple on pizza. I just... The texture of pineapple is so off-putting to me. What? I guess oh, people good. measure. Mm -hmm. I've never really heard of tongue measurements. Mm hmm. Also, who made one of the monsters a Super Saiyan? You're gonna regret that. Why? No. <laughs> it was so cool. They're they're little monsters that look like Super Saiyans. So I'm like, yeah, that's that's totally cool. Y yeah. You. I mean. You. Okay. You heard. You heard the sins that just came out of your mouth, right? About to fight Goku. <laughs> Him. I'd rather not. <laughs> I don't think we can take Super Saiyan Yellow, please. Well, well, if he stands there and screams at us, we could take him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to encapsulate like 1.5 seconds, and they stretch it over three episodes. It's true. The fight with Frieza is supposed to technically take four minutes. Yep. Despite taking, what, a year in real time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. How long was it? In long. Actuality? I know Very it was long. long. I don't know. Actually, I think it was like 10 episodes. It was practically a movie. I even watched <laughs> Dragon Ball Kai instead of Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, that's right, chat. At me, anyways. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z has too much filler, and I wouldn't watch it. But when Kai came out, I was like, sure. Um, and it's still long, even in Kai, where they cut out most of the filler. <laughs> it's okay. They can hate me for only watching a bridge. <laughs> I mean, but that's also just funny. Yeah, it's the only reason I can watch Dragon Ball, because it's... yeah. That's my only experience with Yu-Gi-Oh! It's Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. Also funny. Um, having seen the original show, also, Helsing Abridged is fantastic. Oh, I loved Helsing. I've been hesitant on Helsing Abridged, because I'm like, I just love it so much. I don't know if it's I want to watch so it parodied. Good. It's so good. Well, maybe I'll check it out then. If you love something, you gotta put in the time. I'm mostly kidding. I watched the full length of all of those shows. Well, maybe not all of Yu-Gi-Oh. I got bored with Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, with every subsequent new show they came out with, I lost more interest in it. They, they, hit, a, they hit a good middle ground eventually, but it was like, 
you know, after a while, it's just like... It's just rinse and repeat. Yeah, it's a lot of the same thing. Same characters, brightly colored hair, obvious protagonists. Yeah. Eventually something from an evil world of evilness is there to evil someone, you know? <laughs> Man, I have to find where I put my blue eyes to put it in my new place. I Get really in my head. perpetually being the main character with my brightly. Well, as long as you're ready for that responsibility, it's fine. Absolutely. Did you see my hair, the color it is right now? No. All right, hold on. It's delightful, I have to share. Okay. And then we're starting. Okay. Yes. And there's no undo on drawing. So dumb. Oh, nice. Ooh. Yeah, you, you are a main character. I like I'm the gradient. <laughs> Thank you. That was unintentional. That is, that oh, that is nice. really beautiful. Yeah, That's for really un nice. for unintentional, it came out like really well done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes my hair cooperates with me. Sometimes. Well, uh, kudos to your hairstylist. Uh, that was me. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> okay. How was right. giving credit where credit was due? I, I appreciate that. <clears throat> I'm, I'm I'm talking about me now. Thank you. Okay. I'm also <laughs> done talking about you. Let's talk about D and D. <laughs> so, you uh you have selected your path. Uh, selecting the light one, left one, uh starting with uh exploration. Snow will take you outside, a, the large massive doors of the hangar parting ever so slightly to allow the width of a human to exit. A burst of glacial wind and snow strike you, and it immediately tells you how unpleasant this trip is going to be. It is, at a guess, about minus 30. Woohoo. Fahrenheit? Celsius? Celsius. Thank you. It is right. unreasonably inhospitable. There is a snowstorm that is currently happening, and it's reduced visibility to down to about 15 feet. And there is almost nothing or any sign of properly arranged paths or trails or anything to follow. It is just white landscape beyond. Snow trudges out into the weather uh, and will turn around and look behind her to make sure you're all following. Yes. Yep. yep. And once yep. you are on their heel, uh, you'll watch as uh, the back of their cloak, uh, it has a moment where you see the light hit it uh, and it shimmers and you see on it, uh, on its uh, white and gray uh, color cloak. It has a series of uh, nearly impercept imperceptible spots, uh, one of which turns to red in the dead center of her back, uh, which makes it very easy to keep an eye on her as she moves forward. Kind of her. So. Let me go find my table. I haven't fully finished all of these. Uh, I threw together a bunch uh, earlier today just to try to keep you guys busy. Is it not in your kitchen? <laughs> <sighs> you gotta laugh. You can't even be upset. Uh, I, I, am, I, I am capable of doing both of those things. <laughs> you severely <laughs> underestimate me. I did not underestimate you, sir. I didn't say you did. I'm just saying Kyle does. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to note that I have not made any puns. Punishments are to be held out. Oh, I... okay. Comments, comments. Peanut gallery. 
saying. If you don't want the attention, don't don't say things. Uh, just, don't just, say, don't, just don't talk. Um, things. All right. Um. No, I guess, I guess I'll just start top to bottom. So I'm just gonna start with Martel. Martel, we're only a D20. D20, just kind of like a plain old D20. Plain old D20 roll. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it is an encounter roll. It's a nine. It's a nine. Okay. You go up on ahead, following behind Snow. Uh, and maybe starting to realize why Snow's full name is Red in the Snow, given this uh, leading dot that they have on their back. Makes sense. Doesn't it? Isn't it funny fun when it happens? <laughs> um, you see, as you are led, and time is going to move very quickly in between these, these, these spots. You were out in the cold for about two to three hours. It is nothing but blinding white all around you. It is difficult to make out any kind of terrain that just isn't what is directly in front of you. And you were just trudging through following snow. You eventually reach a place where the first thing that stands out to you that is different is because there is an enormous monolith of stone and ice in front of you. It is so large when you get near it, and the snow is not obscuring your vision, it rises up higher and further than anything you can see into the whiteness beyond, about a hundred feet or more. Once there, snow will get all of you to gather very closely. And over the sound of the snowstorm, uh, we'll begin addressing everyone. All right. Uh, this is uh, one of the first hazards. Uh, unfortunately, it is also um, one of the ways to continue on the journey in the direction we have started. Uh, if we need to climb up and over, uh, there is a large chasm that this uh, subverts uh, around. If if you wish to hazard a guess uh, and take a go to go, to go take a look, you you may. But uh, there's no idea telling how the snow or ice is settled. You may just fall to your death. So I don't recommend it. Um, are any of you, uh, strong climbers? And or do you have climbing gear? I can climb. Um, Martel says, I do have climbing gear, but I am not the strongest climber. That's why we have climbing gear. I don't think that I'm... I have to actually double check my stats because I'm pretty sure that I have a climbing. Yeah, you're a tabaxi, right? You should have a climbing yeah, speed. Climbing speed of 20, yeah. Yeah. One of their weird choices were like, you know, we're going to give you climb speed of 20, not just one that equals your walking speed. Yeah. And lithium generally but I guess climbing is an athletics check, so you're probably a pretty good climber. Yes. Oh, uh, and athletics yeah, checks will be important for this. And I'm just letting you know, Tim is making all of your future monster encounters worse. Stop it, Tim. Granted, I'm enjoying <laughs> I'm enjoying the embellishments. Just just be fully aware I'm I'm taking into account all the embellishments. <clears throat> all right. Um, of you here, uh, are any of you uh, extremely confident in your ability to climb? I'm asking this for the sake of who will lead uh, up and set the anchors for everyone else to climb behind them. Are you not a expert climber? Blah, I can't do my accent right now. Sorry. <clears throat> well, yes, but I wasn't sure if someone would happen to be better than me. Uh, I am not so prideful as to say uh, I am the best one here because I'd rather the best person do the job. I can no, I... I do know that I am good at the climbing. I do not know if I am better than anyone here. Oh, I don't want to say that I'm 
better than either of you, but funny that it's three of us arguing about this. Not arguing, just asking a question. Uh, discussing. Given no one was uh, so forward as to volunteer, I will just um go and say no one's confidence uh, is greater than mine in this ability, then. Other than our tabaxi friend. And, uh, well, I'll be honest, I got to look at your tabaxi friend inside, and they didn't really seem, uh, well, suited for this. That's why you hired me, right? Yep. All right, um, I will go up, I will set, uh, pitons, and, uh, make a, uh, safe way for everyone to climb. Uh, just follow my lead, um... Do not try to do anything uh, unusual or go off path uh, in case you are feeling like you want to show off. Uh, that is how people fall to their deaths. Don't do it. And uh, once everyone has Snow's assurances, uh, she will begin unpacking her climber's kit. Um, and then after it's all rigged and set to her, we'll begin making her way up this, uh, this monolith of ice and stone. And every so often, uh, trailing behind her with the rope, uh, you see that they have anchored a, a piton in place. Um, so, uh, what is uh, our uh, marching order going to be? Who's going to uh, follow suit behind? Uh, Tizira will suggest, since she has got some climbing ability, she'll go last to make sure that she can help anyone who may fall or need help. Um, I mean, Martel's going to eyeball Hasvard and suggest that maybe Hasvard stick close to Tajira. Oh. That's also valid. I was going to suggest I go first because I'm the lightest. That's the least likely to... But that's also a very valid point. I should stay near people that can help me. Thank you for the advice. I was going to suggest going last since I would be the strongest one able to help anyone who falled. Falled. Fell. <laughs> Okay, so we're saying Martel first, me second, Tajira, and then Lithian? If Tajira's sure. okay with it. Yep, Tajira's okay. fine with it. So we're just going to have your tokens thrown out here so we can just kind of reference uh, marching orders necessary. Still hiding me with Lithian, okay. <laughs> um, and I will uh, quickly grab... No. Uh, was Martell then Lithian? It was Martell, uh, uh, Tajira, Lithian. So. Something like that. So, Lithian's going last, is that correct? Yeah, because Lithian has the strength to maybe hang on if the rest of us fell. Point. Or, you know, catch the full weight of somebody or, that is falling past. Yeah, yeah. or <laughs> on the reverse side of that, if Lithian fell, it might take all of us to hold on. <laughs> so I think her going last is the smartest. Okay. You begin climbing. Um, I want everyone to make an athletics check. If you have a climb speed, um, you can make it with advantage. Aw, dice. Ooh. <laughs> what does what does that even mean? <laughs> oh my dice so I rolled the dice and then it landed on a nat twenty and I was like yes and then it stayed there for a second before flipping to a two. Oh for a total oh. of four. Oh, oh you you can you can roll those. Oh, Yes, I can roll twos, <laughs> unfortunately. And I, it, this is a real unfortunate situation, because I also rolled really bad. <laughs> it's better to do it early than late. It, that's rolled, very true. This is basically just guys, you guys getting a false start and taking longer to actually get going than just falling. I got 24. Okay. I got a 27, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, the uh, four. What was uh, Hazard's total? Eight. 
Eight? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm punching you both immediately. Uh, and Snow is uh, coming in with a 21. So we're going to divide all of you by that number. Okay. Um... So we have hit a failure, but not a critical failure. Um, well, uh, Martel, since you've rolled the lowest, uh, roll me another d20. Uh, one. Really like those nines. Martel d20s like to do nines, apparently. Apparently. Um, okay, so the good and bad news is um, none of you are in particular danger. Just that Martell and Hasvard are having the hardest time getting started. So you, you you are all just held up for about about 30 minutes trying to get this going. Trying to find a place where you guys can find comfortable purchase and with other people trying to aid you up, even despite uh the inclusion of the uh the the anchored equipment in place. Both so small, it's hard to get the reach on those mm -hmm. yeah yeah and martel's wearing yeah. slippers it's just... <laughs> martel's wearing slippers it's what do you expect yeah. to do on ice <laughs> you're gonna slip um okay um but eventually after the extra 30 minutes you slowly begin making your way up uh the snowstorm is not helping by any stretch of the imagination and again as i can't continue to emphasize how freaking cold it is. Um, you know, for any of you that have actual bodily fluids to worry about, you know, you've got frost gathering in around your mouth. Like, you know, your nose started running and then immediately began freezing. Everything's just very uncomfortable. So you're like very heavily bundled up, just trying to stay warm and your joints are just going cold so quickly. <clears throat> but you begin and ascend the first, uh, 50 or so feet on this monolith where when you're that high up you now no longer can see the ground thanks to the snowstorm and you can't see anything out beyond or anything above you except for the next 50 feet where snow is still progressing making anchor uh anchoring pitons along the way for you to keep following so um everyone is making due time because of the way Martell and Hasvard has had some difficulty so far, is there anything you guys want to change up about this scenario to try to help them? Mm. Can't think of what we could change. Tim. Um, are you able to do the help action while climbing or no? Like, because if you have a climb speed. It would essentially, it would just eliminate, it would eliminate Tajira's advantage for the athletic checks. Oh, okay. So Tajira could eliminate uh, her own advantage to give someone else advantage on the check. Well, never mind. That doesn't help much. Yeah, I think she would, she would prefer to keep that just so that she can help if, well, have, no. Yeah. Yeah, because this isn't this isn't even this you know this is still not a simple uh you know thing to overcome so mm -hmm. even an expert climber in this scenario stopping to help someone else is no longer focusing solely on their ability to climb they're focusing on someone else's so no matter what it's going to be it's, it's it would always be a matter of well this person's good but they're going to be a little less good because now they're worrying about two individuals valid valid so the surface we're climbing is it like Ice, stone. Um, the exterior, oh. from what you've noticed, uh, where the pitons have been anchored in, uh, have been cut into ice. Um, but there are there are uh, just like areas and planes of stone. Uh, so you think it's a large stone pillar or monolith of some kind to cover it in a sheet of ice. Okay. Um. Then to try and aid her climbing, Martel does have two magical knives in her shoes that she will pop out to try and get dig into the ice 
and then when it's the stone portions, she'll pop them back in because they'll be much worse. Mm -hmm. And your boot spikes from your climbing so, kit will help with that. Yeah. So do the climbing kits not give us advantage? Uh, in this instance, they keep you normal. Otherwise, this would be all done at disadvantage. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. So that's what Martel's doing to try and help herself. Okay. But, yeah. Like the climbing, I think of. I have pickaxes for climbing and stuff like that. Like, there's nothing better than that for me. Okay. Like, I'm not going to use my foil. All right. We're going to do another series of athletics checks then. Uh, again, climb speeds. Uh, you have advantage. I rolled a nat 20. 29. Ooh. So did Snow. Hey. I can't roll above a 10. I'm I going think... to spend some inspiration, which was a decision I came to before Kyle said anything. <laughs> Speaking of Kyle, I need a number. Um, That would be a 7. Okay. Nice. Lucky number 7. I'm so lucky. Um, Martel has a 16. Okay. And Tajira? Tajira got an 18. 18. Overall, much better. Oh, you know, I keep forgetting. I completely forgot someone else was here. Uh, the Handmaiden. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can't That's drag those numbers down a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, I didn't. Good. Why is she still with us? Man, that's funny. That would have been a great question to ask her before leaving the city. It's okay, I think we can take her. I, I mean, for what it's worth, I imagine Lithian would have. But we're in the middle yeah. of something right now, so I would say we can do that retroactively later. <clears throat> Uh, that being said, the inclusion of that role does not does not uh, lower the success uh, that has been brought upon uh, all of these roles, despite Hazard's uh, not as great luck. Hooray. The Ascent um, goes much better now uh, after being able to just sort of settle in and get used to the new environment you're now traveling in. Hazard has a brief slip um, uh, where Tajira manages to, to more or less put up a hand and literally just catch him from underneath. So Hasbar can just get his footing again and continue climbing. Thank you. Um, More careful, please. You Holy finally shit. have reached past the point where you could, you could see at the base of the pillar, realizing it continues beyond the 100-foot mark, still arcing upwards. Uh, but the incline is nowhere near as steep as it was. It is beginning to uh, tilt and... Uh, make this a little bit easier. Uh, any adjustments? Any, 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 any hubbub to be done? No. No, no bubbing, no hubbing? No. Okay. Uh, don't think so. Don't think there's anything Martel can do at the moment. And it's not like we can take an active perception test, a check, to make sure we're not going to be, like, swiped up the mountain by, like, a eagle or something. I mean, you because could. That would give us a disadvantage for the next roll, probably, and I don't mm. want to do that. Do not necessarily. You could, uh, you can roll a perception check at disadvantage. Oh. And see what you can spot. Disadvantage. Wow, I just wasted my best rolls. Uh, so that's <laughs> a 14. <laughs> a 14? Well, yeah, because it's disadvantage. Yeah. I rolled a 16 and a 13. Okay. Um, well, uh, during the climb, you have a moment where you sort of pause and uh, you squint your eyes uh, through your hood and, and the fur trim, trying to see what you can see. But unfortunately, the snowstorm is just so dense, your visibility yeah. is just completely just rot. You can't see anything. Um, that just means we're safe. Yeah, there's no shadows uh, that you can notice. So there's no signs of climbing, climbing up this uh, monolith of anything that has climbed before you. Um, every, you don't see anything that would give you any pause for concern. Cool. 
All right. Um, I'm on another series of athletics checks, please. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Is that an eight? Yeah. Nice. Cuthbert, <laughs> what are you doing? Roll a different d20, please. I find a different dice. I've been rolling between different <laughs> dice. Oh my god. They don't like each other then. Uh, Martel? 13, 13 for Martel. Okay. I'll be right back with a different dice. <laughs> well, the good news is, um, three people rolled 22s that time. Uh, really? And Snow, who unsurprisingly is very good at this, uh, rolled a 28. Mm -hmm. So we, we seemed, uh, you seem to have characters that are capable of carrying everyone along in case they have uh, any... Any sad happenstances? <laughs> my back, my back is so heavy. You might as well. You might as well have just taped Hasvar to Lithium, and it would have gone better. <laughs> I thought about it. I'm not gonna lie. I thought yeah, about just, it. Just turn, just turn Hasvar into like, just get a baby carrier for him. Put a chair, yeah. Put a chair on your back, and I'll be happy. Like, Hell has made numerous harnesses for Hasvar in the past. Although yep. he's probably starting to realize what they are and not too pleased about them. Um, who said I wasn't pleased about them? Oh, well, I mean... All right. <laughs> when Martel makes harnesses for you... They feel good. Yeah. It might not be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're in love with Ratchery. you got to be at least a bit of a masochist. There you go. <laughs> got it. <laughs> You hit the nail. Where was it? <laughs> on on my head? On my on, heart. <laughs> probably wow. on your button. It was a claw. <clears throat> Too edgy. All right, moving on. <laughs> so the, <laughs> the next stretch of this climb sees you reaching a ledge. Snow is waiting for you at it and helps all of you up. Uh, you see that while there is still a slight incline, it has become a place that is walkable. On the left and right, with their limited visibility, you can see that there is an edge that vanishes into the white beyond. And a bridge of the same stone and ice that extends out before you heading northward uh, for an unknown amount of time. All right, um, this time it's a little bit simpler. Uh, moving forward, um, if you're worried about um, your own safety uh, and would prefer to have a buddy, uh, I don't recommend this most of the time, but if someone is confident, uh, tie yourself to someone else. Uh, and she kind of looks past everyone at Hazard. Um, <laughs> otherwise, the high winds up here can be dangerous um, and uh, very easy to lose your footing on some of the ice and stone. Uh, so be careful, uh, if you have, uh, boot spikes from your climbing equipment, I suggest you keep them on. I do well, not wish to lose you, I will tie it around my waist and hold the rope out to Lithian. <laughs> Lithian will take it and sigh. <laughs> I'm so sorry, dear. Like, I, it's no. really not on purpose. My knees sometimes, they ache. It's age <laughs> sucks. Yes, I understand, and I would ask Martel for help. I got far to her. <laughs> uh, yeah, Martel will help out in tying those knots <laughs> in the best way she knows how. Inappropriate. You know, I could have tied appropriate knots, but that's okay. That's I way less. I it would have been difficult to do, like, yourself. Hmm. Exactly how old are you? I'm not actually that old. I'm well, we theorize that I'm probably early 30s, maybe late 30s, but eh, that's just what Wasnir thinks. A theory? And you do not you know how old know? you are. It's a long story. Which We've we got a long walk ahead. Uh, and I'm, you may die. 
That's true too. You know, that's not normally the thing you bring up at the start of a journey, but cool. Well, I actually I did. It was the first thing I said to you all. No, I know. Um, Sorry. Our channel nods. <laughs> Who will tell your story if you do die and nobody knows how old you are? Um, well, it doesn't really no matter how old I am, it matters what I do. <laughs> Tell just kind of looks at Tajira and goes, The age of somebody is probably the least interesting part of a story. Hmm. Mm. Well, yes, it but... It can be central. It depends on the story. It's not about the age, it's the fact he doesn't know it. Well, and then he starts to explain the story of why he doesn't know his age, and I'll type it up later and toss it into in character chat. Cool. Exciting. Juicy. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, Ovid. Yeah. Sorry to just <laughs> But an insult. Just an unexpectedly snide reply to CJ <laughs> saying, cool. Sorry if I made a reference to pop culture media that I enjoy. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Something that you had me watch. I was enjoying the reference. Anyway. You've now reached the uh, leveled out part of the monolith, and you've begun crossing the chasm somewhere down below, hidden in the white mists and snow. The winds, as snow have warned you, are very powerful up here. There are gusting winds that threaten to topple you uh, every so often, and the way before you is slick and treacherous. Now, for a different part of this, I would like everyone to make acrobatics checks. I have advantage on these. Hooray! I don't have disadvantage. Right? Because this time it's a 29, so I'm actually contributing to the group. 25. <laughs> Hasvard and Martel are finally contributors. <laughs> 22. I'm so glad I have advantage. 25. I rolled a 1 the first time. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, this stretch of uh, the uh, hazard is much easier for all of you. Uh, as you all expertly balance yourselves and wait and anchor yourselves in place for gusts of wind and keep progressing at a slow but reasonable pace across this pillar. It is after about a hundred or so feet that you stop. Uh, you see snow come to a halt. Uh, and in front of snow is a best described as a jagged crown of ice. But it is not like the crown for someone's head. It is instead large. Uh, it is the whole width of this uh, stone and ice bridge you are crossing. And it goes up to, at the highest point, about 20 feet. And it's just jagged stone and ice that's jutting out. Um, Snow uh, sort of turns around and calls back behind, uh, to all of you. This wasn't here uh, a couple of days ago. We have to be very careful. Uh, do you want to go around or over? Tizira will say, I think around is more safe. Yes, considering if something wasn't here before, then around is probably safer. Are you familiar with the path around? She'll ask Snow. Snow will literally point to the edge of the, the, the edge of the walkway that goes into the, the abyss down below and then just holds up pitons and rope and goes, I can become familiar. <laughs> I will be more confident in that. Personally. I mean, how tall is this thing, this crown? Um, at its highest point, 20 feet. Um, if we have to climb all the way back down another of those cliffs, I don't want to. Um, Martel just kind of 
points at the crown and says, Is the normal path you take through where this cr crown this uh, is? Uh, yes. Um, most of the time, uh, well, for the last two weeks since this has appeared, uh, we go up and straight over. The, uh, the jagged formation here is new to the last couple of days. Shrugs and I think we should go over it. Do you think it's safe to climb? Is there any razor sharp pile of rocks safe to climb? In no. gusting winds and covered in ice? In a plane full of primordial magics? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Well then, um, alright, up and over then, I guess. This should be fun. Hey. <laughs> Tizier just kind of trails off. Alright. Well, uh, same story, but slightly different. Uh, Snow gets out uh, the excess climbing equipment she has. Uh, it begins rigging various climbing points, but these are more like footsteps than anything. Um, and to make sure you have something to hold on to whenever the winds gust. Um, and you watch as snow slowly begins making the trek up. And it's quite clear that being a tabaxi in this instance has made the feat of climbing over this a lot easier. Uh, if only because of the claws that uh, snow has access to to more or less anchor herself onto the ice and stone in certain places. Um, since we're climbing, uh, uh, this is uh, going to be another series of athletics checks. Yay. Two questions. Yes. Is, like, Trans Bard is attached to me, right? Is Am I making this with a disadvantage, or is he still making rolls? Uh, you can eliminate Hasvard. Uh, Hasvard, how heavy are you? I'm... In including equipment. That's a really good question, honestly. That is important. Um, including equipment. I'm a skinny-ish goblin. I'm a small creature. I'd probably say a hundred and like ninety pounds, maybe. Uh, oh, I think that's insanely that's, high. That's very yeah. high. okay. Okay, well let's drop that. To, like, I would say probably at your heaviest, what seventy pounds yeah oh wow see i always misjudge that well so you got to remember that goblins are like three feet tall right so you're about yeah. the size of a yeah. mid-sized child yeah and you're also not you're not a, you're not actually a halfling where halflings tend to be a bit meatier no i'm um, a skinny only goblin goblins are well let's find out you know we, we have an exact reference in a book for this particular reason uh goblins uh, size, you're between 40 and 80 pounds. Um, and then you have to accommodate for all the extra gear you're carrying. So pick your number yeah. between somewhere between 40 and 80, given Hazard's lifestyle and his enjoyment of fine foods. I think he's probably a little bit on the heavier side. Like 70. And right. then with gear. You think you're carrying 100 pounds of gear on your 70 oh, pound frame? Close. Um, I made sure to cut down on my gear heavily because of uh, us losing uh, Mary, which is fine. Um, I would say I probably have somewhere between 20 and 25 pounds worth of stuff. Okay. About um, 100 pounds. Yeah, I would say looking at your equipment, you don't have anything that's uh, ultra heavy, just a lot of small uh, stuff. Like, um, sounds like an awful lot of weight for your... carrying no i mean like what did he say about 25 pounds is what he said yeah. that's, sounds about, that's like it's about that's reasonable like two swords the hand crossbow and like probably an extra 12 to 15 pounds of weight of gear yeah but swords are like they're, they're a pound they're, and a half they're light and they're also made for small so they're a little bit lighter than what the average one is yeah no all i think right. i still think 25 pounds is about accurate given all the all other right. stuff he's carrying and the rope and the winter gear and it's about right. 25 pounds. Now, if you had like a two-person tent on you, which you guys have, but are smartly not carrying on your person because they're in an extra-dimensional bag, um, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, uh, that's about right. 
Um, right. In which case, Lithian, uh, I'm not going to penalize you. Uh, you just make the roll straight, uh, and Hasvar cannot make one at all, if he would uh, so decide. Thank you. Cool. Goblin um, back. Okay, question. Mm-hmm. Second question. Yeah. Can I use my claws? If you want a hybrid form, yeah. Would it give me an advantage or no? Um, well, it technically doesn't give you a climb speed, but that's the reason why tabaxis have a climb speed. Um, maybe that's just an oversight on my part, and I should have given you a climb speed for your, for your like, Um, yeah, you know what? Because of that weird nuance that I've not really thought about, sure, you can have advantage if you, uh, you bust out some tiger claws and feet. Cool, yeah. Let's do it. Why not? What about it? Um, I used my last point of inspiration, but, uh, it turned it into a 21. Okay. For Martel. 28. 28. Uh, Taijira? I got... I got a 23. Okay. We did my average uh, roll and Hazvar's average roll, and I added them together for mine. For my <laughs> <laughs> you put it like that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, how does that work? Five now. Okay. Uh, a rousing success. Um, the highest one yet, actually. All we had to do was cut Hasbro out of the equation. Um, <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you guys managed to ascend up and over uh, using the uh, you know the handholds and the and, and the and the footholds that Snow identifies and carves out a little bit further. When you get to the top, it's surprising. You realize that there's actually an area in the center of this crown of ice and stone, if you will, that is actually hollowed out. Um, and standing in it, you realize uh, this is more like an impact crater. And in the center appears to be uh, some a type of glowing, slightly misshapen sphere. Um, Martel is curious, but she'll put it out there and say, Do people want to investigate? I am certainly curious. Um, I lean down with Hasvert on my back and go, Look at that. What does it do? Uh, can I get down? If Lithium lets you down, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Lithium. I'm a little nervous to go up to something that's magical. Uh, if you really want me to, I will. Martel. <laughs> uh, Martel will turn to the handmaiden and also to um, uh, 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 Snow, okay. and she'll say, because Snow has the the experience in these areas, and the handmaiden <laughs> might have some mm-hmm. knowledge or abilities that could help. And she'll mm-hmm. say, what do? the two of you think is it safe to try and go and investigate this or better my, we avoid it my rule of thumb when it comes to traveling out here in the waste nothing is safe um if you uh, think this could be valuable to you and this is the reason why you are here you are more than free to investigate otherwise um it is probably just another risk do not know uh, how careful you wish to be my advice Move on. She'll turn to the handmaiden. I have magics that I might be able to identify it and tell us its nature and whether or not if it would be worthwhile to attempt to bring with us. And then she'll turn to the rest of the party and say, uh, I think that that would be, that could prove profitable. Read. Yeah. Try it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. 
very well. Okay. Uh, Do you the have to get close. Uh, the handmaiden uh, just looks at you. And I must touch the object in order to uh, identify it. She'll just nod and say, Well, I say the two of us go up then. I am willing to take the risk. Martel just smiles and says, And I am willing to take it with you. I pull up my hand crossbow. The handmaiden begins walking forward. Martel will go with her. I start walking around to the right. Okay. Um, you watch as the handmaiden produces a pearl from somewhere within her cloak. Um, holds it up before her. Um, and once uh, she gets near this object, the temperature does dip quite a bit when you get closer to it, which is mm. kind of hard to notice given how freaking cold it is already. Uh, but there's literally frost starting to very obviously and very unnaturally gather around the edges of both of you, the closer and closer you get. Martel will activate the warming stone. Okay. For now. It will help. Get close. Yeah. Um, reaching out with uh, her empty hand, the handmaiden, you watch as the frost begins to gather along her gloves. Uh, she gets closer and closer um, until she just rests the tips of her fingers onto it. Uh, she, with the other hand, puts the pearl up in the air uh, and lets go of it and begins to float. And you watch as the outside kind of begins to glow and shift with this pearlescent color. Um, there's a moment where you see her eyes flash. Um, and unfortunately, it takes a moment, what feels like a lifetime, a, a whole minute um, before the spell is completed. Uh, and she uh, pulls her hand back uh, you know, very, very quickly. Uh, the one that was touching it, kind of putting it into her cloak, because uh, it was completely rhymed in frost by the time she was done. Uh, yeah, Martel just put that the warming stone in her hands so that she can warm her hand a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't say anything in regards to that, uh, but yeah. she does look up at you, uh, and then she says, <clears throat> this is uh, a... how to phrase it... A globe of ever ice. Uh, it, it is a material that comes from the uh, respective elemental plane. Um, and this piece is unusually magical. If someone were to stay with it for a period of time, uh, it will shape itself into uh, the desired person's um, imagination. It can be used to make a weapon or a uh, piece of armor that is uh, composed entirely of ice that is un unbreakable and unmeltable. Um, yeah, Martel smiles and says, Well, I definitely think that was worth the look. Um, How big is this thing? Uh, about the size of a basketball. Size of a basketball. Uh, and how far are we from our friends? Not that far. About ten feet. Ten feet. Yeah. Then, <laughs> uh, Martel will yell to Lithian and say, Um, it's a very good item. Do you mind if I put it in your bag very quickly? It's, it's not going to freeze my clothes, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the most important question of the whole session. Uh, <laughs> Martel just kind of stares at Lithian and says, I do not think that's how bags of holding work, but... You know, I'm not big up in the magic thing that's always been my brother's domain, but yeah, sure, put it in there. Martel looks at the handmaiden and it's like, I, I do not think that's how bags of holding work. They just nod in agreement. <laughs> right. Then Martel will grab this thing and uh, rush over to Lithian as she, her hands are freezing onto it. Like, it's cold, 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 cold. 
the the, the bag is open for yeah, you. You just stuff it. It's like it's it's pretty large for the for the actual like size of the mouth of the bag of holding, but, but you kind of get it there and you kind of just kind of have to, like push it in a little and eventually just, mm, just pops in. Whew. All right. Um, is, uh, if we're finished, we can keep moving. Going down is more dangerous than going up. Comes up from Hasvard over to the right. How is your hand, Radel? Sorry, what? Is that at me? Yes. Okay, She's sorry. I missed, yeah, I missed the name at the end. Um, yeah, Martel will look at her hands. Did um, yeah. covered in ice. <laughs> Her hands are covered in ice, and she goes, oh, um, just kind of, like, bashes them against the ground a bit, cracks the ice off. Zero looks horrified. <laughs> does, does, does that not hurt? That looks very painful. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's see here. Let's point yeah. that one away. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh. I mean, it's, it's a 27 performance check. She goes, oh, yes, it's very painful. It was um, numb, numb at first. I didn't notice. Ow. Very <laughs> painful. <laughs> oh, um, she's got a zero. She kind of looks so. over at the handmaiden and is like, um, could I have the warming stone for a minute. <clears throat> yes, of course, princess. Here you go. And she just gives it over without any fuss. Yeah, holds on to it for a bit. Her eyes darting back and forth suspiciously. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, have, I have a memory question. <laughs> Has the handmaid called Martel princess the entire time? Yes. Okay. I find it weird now for some reason. Now you find it. <laughs> Such an odd time to take issue with it now. Sorry. <laughs> and, like when you asked why Martel was bringing her, that was her response was princesses deserve and maidens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is what she said. Anyway, you will continue up and out of this small crater with your new prize uh, safely tucked away in your bag of holding. On the other side, where there's yet another stretch of slippery, open ice and stone to cross. You all know the drill by this point. We need some acrobatics checks to see if everyone's safe. Acrobatics, not athletics. Acrobatics. Right. Ooh, actually really bad. Oh. So oh my god. Uh, 13 um, for Martel. That's terrible for Martel. I know. I rolled a nat 20 and a nat 1. <laughs> <laughs> so, 27 total. <laughs> uh, what was Hasbard's total? 30. 30. And Tejira? Uh, 28, or sorry, 28, 18. Still really good numbers, though, guys. Martel's distracted by pretending that her hands are in yeah. pain. <laughs> Ow. Oh, Ow. no. Oh, no. And not using <laughs> her hands for balance like she normally would. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, oh, the okay. agony. <laughs> 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 so, Tejira's insight is zero. So she literally had zero chance in figuring that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but you safely cross the stretch, um, still with a couple of, you know, potential hazards uh, and risks of people being gusted off the side, but you safely cross, uh, finding yourself staring uh, at another edge that goes down and vanishes into a cloud of light. Snow just looks back at everyone. I'll give someone a hundred gold if you just slide down. 
No. Okay. And how would we collect this gold? After. After we're dead? Yes. <laughs> this sounds like a bad deal. <laughs> Mortel just smiles and says, It may not seem like I listen, but I listen to you about showing off. I say we just climb down. Agreed. That only ever worked once. <laughs> Sad time. <laughs> <laughs> Artel does giggle a little bit and then just kind of gets her composure again I... every time sorry go for it um, every every time Snow makes a morbid joke Lithian laughs, laughs every I say Lithian has inadvertently made a friend yes <laughs> Hooray, friends all, right. all around on this journey. Uh, well, we're going to... wants to know the story, so she'll ask later. We're going to uh, speed this one up a little, because uh, you guys know what the downward slope looks like. Um, but this side is shorter. I'll just reveal that to you now. Uh, so I want two series of uh, athletics or acrobatics checks, because descending is a little bit different than climbing. All right. Oh, boy. Okay, yeah, I got a 10. Yeah, I got a 22. <laughs> uh, modified 20 and then a 27 for Martel. Both acrobatics, obviously. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, not you two, please. I rolled. My first is a 12 and my second is a 13. <laughs> Total? And I have... want an advantage for both. Yes, total. <laughs> Ouch. Do you have any inspiration? Uh no. yes. Yes, you do. You oh. did the you did the vocal recap. You have three points. Oh, look at that. Alright, I'll re-roll one of those. Okay, that becomes a twenty-six. Oh, that's way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, the first leg down uh, is still a rousing success. Uh, between Snow's uh, advice uh, and leading uh, down and more or less proving points of purchase for everyone else to sort of follow in uh, in her wake, uh, it gets easier. Um, but I don't have everyone's second round of rolls, so I think Hazvard uh, and uh, Tajira, I need both uh, second rolls for you guys. Because I have Martell and Lithian. 18 for the second one, then. Uh, I'm sorry, Tajiro, what was yours? It was uh, 23. Okay. 24. It was 24. Okay. Okay. Whew. That one was close. Um, we, we got into the decimals on success for that one. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it was close. It was real. It was literally a point one difference. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. At least uh, the second half is going to the fall. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. Um, and of all the people that rolled low, I think both of them could easily recover from, you know, a 50 foot fall. Well, that's um, exciting. But that being said, uh, on the way down the last stretch, um, for a small amount of dramatics, um, you have, uh, Martell slip briefly and skid for a distance, uh, and Snow manages to sort of catch you, um, and anchor herself against the side, uh, with her claws, um, before everyone kind of catches up and they, everyone has a moment to reset themselves before continuing down. I slipped with a 27? Oh, uh, the second one? Never mind. I, I misjudged numbers. It was the first one I was thinking of. Never mind. In which case, well, then we just change you out. It was Lydia. Sorry. <laughs> take, we'll, we'll, take, we'll take one of the two low numbers from Lithian's rolls and just assume that was it. Alright. It's like... Oh. <gasps> um, someone slipped. It was dramatic. <laughs> you were saved. Sorry, I didn't mean to ruin the moment. Everyone's <laughs> fine. 
Um, the way down on this side is a bit shorter, uh, and you land in a uh, high mound of snow. Um, uh, that is quite deep. Um, uh, but you managed to uh, have crossed over, uh, acquired an interesting object, um, and now stare out before you with this uh, large stone edifice behind you providing a bit of cover. Uh, you can see just what are long, rolling hills with sharp edges uh, that just kind of range out uh, until they vanish once more behind this veil of light. You have successfully passed the first obstacle. Ooh. Yay! Honestly, it was none too bad. I didn't even—I didn't even have to burn any resources from you guys. The second one, though, is Super Saiyans, so I think that'll get something out. <laughs> oh, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, but speaking of uh, the, the man who is causing all the problems, Tim, roll me a d6. Oh, a d6. That's interesting. Yes, you're going to determine creature type. I got a three. Three. Right. I like my real dice. They give me nice numbers. Not the three's a nice number. <laughs> On a d6, someone might call that average. <laughs> I realized the point was made in due time. <laughs> uh, but in terms of actual results, uh, let's see what it did. Oh, wow, that's not even imaginative. Okay. Oh, no. Oh. Average roll, <laughs> average imagination, I suppose. Yeah, uh, completely uninterestingly. Um, as you forward, forward pushing through this thick snow coverage, hiking over these steep hills and sharp cliffs, you reach a high point where snow once more stops you, putting up a hand, and then will gather you all to the edge of this hill that you're currently on. And overlooking down below, you see uh, in a tight, uh, like, ah, uh, geez, words are losing me. This is not the time. It's the end of the night. Get it together, CJ. Um, a, uh, a small canyon uh, that uh, runs through the valley uh, where everything else around you is much steeper. Uh, this was the clear and obvious path through. However, uh, kind of swarming over the location are a series of large, mildly reflective, spiked, to the best of all of your knowledge, ice elementals. Spiky. They kind of move to one location, sort of settle. And you'll watch occasionally as some hunch over and pull their arms in, and they just create this small mound of ice. Then you watch as quickly snow materializes over top of it, and their, and their spikes retract. And they just seem like another small, like, rock or, or hill that's been covered in snow. Uh, camouflaging themselves for an ambush. Alright. So, you see down below, uh, these are amongst uh, some of the native elementals to Eridu. Uh They are, uh, well, trappers. Uh, they like to uh, hide themselves in plain sight, wait for things to come nearby, uh, and then jump out and uh, slay whatever whatever is nearby. Um, while we might see uh, four or five right now, I guarantee you there are probably at least twice as many. Would you rather uh, avoid the pass altogether uh, and go to one of the, 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 the mountains on the left or right? Uh, it'll probably add about twice the amount of time. Uh, to our travel today, um, or uh, conversely, we can try to sneak by uh, if you would prefer to avoid them altogether. Uh, we're trying to stay uh, 
on time so that we don't freeze to death at night. Hmm. How predictable are the locations they are hitting? I can perhaps melt all the snow there. There it is. Um, depends on how long they've been burrowed. Uh, since we see some of them settling now, it doesn't look like they've been here all that long. Um, it's probably safe to say anything uh, uh, that um, looks a little unnatural and based off how they're sitting is probably one of them. Uh, it would require a perception or investigation check uh, from this distance to kind of try to identify which ones might be uh, uh, of the elementals and which ones aren't. She'll try. All right, sure. I'll take your perception check. Is this a group thing for the investigation one? Uh, it's. I'll take two people. I'd like yeah. to investigate. I got fourteen, so yeah. I got a thirty-three. Did <laughs> <laughs> well, you? You're not positive. Uh, there's honestly lots of mounds, lots of snow. They could be tucked up against part of the uh, a cut through in the uh, in the ice and stone. Uh, they could le just literally be buried underneath a couple feet of snow, and you would never know. Um, Hasvard, looking at them a, a little bit more closely, uh, there are a couple of locations that seem a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit off. It's more like a gut feeling about how you look at them. Uh, it, they just don't feel like they fit into the rest of the terrain. Um, that being said, uh, now that you can kind of identify locations you believe them to be hiding, uh, there are at least 12 uh, of these elementals based off of uh, the ones you can see. There are five walking around and there are seven hidden. I relay this to the party. So uh, if we feel like fighting through it, it's going to be about three per person kind of thing. How strong are they? Pretty powerful. If you fought any elementals, then you have a rough estimate of how strong they are. Um, they are not very fond of fire, however, if any of you are uh, proficient mages of uh, evocation persuasion, um, mm. you might be able to make short work of them. Uh, I... Otherwise, uh, it's formidable. I, As I've advised, uh, I prefer to avoid most conflict if, uh, if and where possible. Um... Do you, do you know if they uh, drop any materials that can be sold back at the city? Hmm. Uh, similar to what you found uh, earlier, but not similar to what you found earlier. Uh, they have cores of Everace, um, which is uh, pretty uh, pretty well paid for in the city. Um, they are much smaller uh, and do vary from elemental to elemental, um, but they fetch a good price on the market if you can find a buyer. We still have a decent amount uh, of distance to go before our rest point, I believe. Uh, another six or seven hours. I don't feel like we should extend that by going around. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Um, let us try to sneak. Yeah, I think it would be smartest to try and avoid avoid them. If we have to fight them, we will, but we will avoid them if we can. Copy that. I have my crossbow out and my action held ready to shoot them when they notice us. My bonus action is to stealth. Okay. Well, uh, let's get some stealth checks. <laughs> Woot woot! 32! This is where Hasbard and Lithian's roles become opposite. Yeah! I'm sorry. That's bad. <laughs> you were way Ooh. too happy about that. <laughs> I, I took it back immediately, because I realized what she was actually saying. I thought it was a good thing at first, that I was celebrating that we were the same, and then I realized we were the same. It's 28 okay, for Martel. Very nice. I got a modified 20. All right. Let's see if I say something I can't quite hear. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm 
Got a 19. That's still uh, not, that's bad. not bad at all. Well, I rolled a 17, so. Oh. Oh. I mean, it, still yeah. not bad. Then I, I uh, actually I think, think it was Martel and you who switched roles. Because <laughs> that's exactly my bonus to athletics. Uh, sorry, doing really complicated math on someone who had to roll a lot of dice. No, of course. Oh, and Snow just rolled a natural 19, so sweet. Hooray. Yay, Snow. All right, well, if it makes everyone feel better, Lithians was the lowest roll at 19. Woo. Hooray. Like, that's actually great. That is. Please don't make me roll another one. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> you think you're only going to get away after one stealth check? Get out. <laughs> There's going to be a survival check as well to navigate what is more or less a minefield. I, I told them where they all were. Oh, I know. But now you're going to be down there and uh, you don't have this great vantage point anymore. So you have to make sure no one casually walks into them. That's valid. Was it? I think it must have been you, CJ, who did the Minesweeper in the D&D. Yeah, yeah, it was Minesweeper adjacent, yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Anyway. I'm having a lot of fun adapting uh, other games into something that can try to be played here. It doesn't always work out, but it sometimes does. Oh, it's cool ideas. Okay, uh, so the, for the, average is a, the average stealth for this, the group stealth check, is a 25, which is great. Um, Normally. Didn't even require uh, someone to pass, pass, out, pass without trace. Yeah, not bad at all. So you move down from the snowbank you were on, further down into this uh, area where this cut through, this small canyon exists, um, and you very carefully uh, communicating silently through hand signals with snow leading the way, uh, pass a couple of the elementals that are just kind of casually patrolling about. Uh, it is the next part because you can't just follow in a straight line together to do this because of the timing between the elementals. Everyone kind of has to take their own separate path and cautiously move along through the group. Uh, as this goes forward, uh, I would like a survival check from everybody. Less good. Definitely less good. In Ooh. fact, Probably the worst thing I could try and do. Yeah, we, we might die. I got a 15. Um, am I going to use inspiration? When I'm Elsa, am I going to use inspiration? I'm going to use some inspiration. <laughs> I, I oh, it's so one. much better. I rolled an eight. It's an eight. <laughs> well, I rolled a nat 20 for 22. So. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I'm sorry, Martel. What was yours? Nine. Nine. Hey, Ben, we're right there together. <laughs> uh, and Tajira? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weighing down the team together, Kyle. Fifteen. Thanks, buddy. It's so hard to do it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're that small. Uh. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. Um, no. But however, however, however. Uh, let's see uh, how well these things are hidden. Should be above 10. The average is a uh, 17. Uh, snow crit, fun. so snow was doing great. Um, and the handmaiden who likes to roll averagely low sometimes has a lot of dice she can roll to make up. Can like I ask like right. a question for like an advantage on myself because I spotted them earlier and knew where they were? Is that allowed? Sure. That's reasonable. Three it's an nine. 11. <laughs> hooray. I'm not going to retabulate the, the numbers, but hooray, it's not an eight. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> um, <laughs> it's no small victories for me, CJ. <laughs> it's double digits. Um, all right. Well, the good news is, luckily for you, I mean, all of you, all of the elementals, after, you know, they've 
you, several of them have disguised themselves. With Hasvard having spotted them from up on the bank, and then coming down here, uh, their disguise actually doesn't hold up as well when you're down on the same level as them as it does from above. So they're actually quite a bit easier to spot. They're just small pieces of, and shards of ice that you see that sort of glint out of what is just plain white snow. Um, and despite uh, a couple of people not being as perceptive and being able to identify the markings or the spots for where these creatures have been, with a little bit of help, and again, quiet hand gestures from everybody involved, you manage to avoid uh, the first grouping of where these things are hidden. You reach the edge of the canyon. There are three paths here. Uh, to put it simply, there is a central low road and then two left and right high roads, uh, where the two, the left and right, are, are higher up, about 15 feet above the central uh, main low road, uh, and are uh, much more narrow. Uh, only one person can go on it at a time. Uh, and uh, it is going to be slightly treacherous, so you would have to make some acrobatics checks as you go along. Uh, however, it has the advantage of the fact that the elementals can't possibly fit on them. And in the low row down below, which is at varying points 10 to 15 feet across, uh, there are a handful of elementals that are wandering uh, through this canyon. Therefore, sneaking past them might be a slightly greater challenge. But if you're not, if you don't believe in your ability to stay on the tiny little ledge above, it is the only other option you have. So, uh, anyone for the low road? I didn't think so. I am confident in my ability to take the high road here. Can we shift him from the high road? Something, something, Robert Frost. Something, something, Hasvar is going to start a problem. I'm not going to do it. Are you... I was just asking. Kind of looks at the narrow ledge, looks at the elementals below, and says, I wouldn't advise it. Hasvar nods. Yep, I'm not going to be a sugar it. happy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to start things off with a fresh round of stealth checks. Oh, fresh check. Mm. A surprising modified 20. Ooh. A bit disappointing. My rolls have not been great tonight. Except for those times when they were. Yeah, 17. Snow didn't do great either. 28. Uh, I'm sorry, Lithian. What was yours? Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, Tajira. I got a modified. Oh no, no that's twenty-three. Got yeah, twenty-two. Those are very different numbers. They are. Okay. Okay. The average stealth of the party is twenty-one. Damn. <laughs> That's pretty good, given that the average for it, compared to the first set was nowhere near as good. Um, all right. Uh, you begin all slowly moving along these narrow cliff edges uh, above these elementals. Now, I want everyone to make an acrobatics check. This is about keeping your footing and not accidentally pushing anything off to alert the elementals from down below. 26. Nice. Also 26. When nice. it's dexterity, I have a chance. Rogues. <laughs> uh, using a luck point, I am spending all my resources tonight. Um, using a luck point, I got a 25. It's frustrating, because no nothing I've rolled is an at one, but I'm getting like twos and threes. Like, Martel's weakness. It. My biggest weakness. Yeah. <laughs> got a Fifteen. Snow. Okay. Um. Again, another series of relatively average numbers. But then yeah, that's a lot. Everyone will work incredibly well. From my side. <laughs> I 
average for the level of party we are. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, 26, 26, 25, 26 is, looks great, and then it dips into the 15 and the 20. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, but the average of a 23 is still really good. Which means everyone is keeping their feet steady, uh, and no one is uh, of any particular hazard to uh, of making or alerting anybody. But let's see if these uh, elementals are going to be uh, especially perceptive. The thing that's really funny is that they need to actually just t they need to get a twenty to even stand a chance of seeing you guys. I've rolled three nineteens. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, unfortunately for them, uh, isn't good enough to notice you. As you all yeah. slowly make your way by. Ooh. But, unfortunately, there is just one last section remaining. No. <laughs> as you see, oh yeah, don't worry. Uh, at the end, uh, as you guys are about halfway down, you see on the far side where you past initially, several of the elementals that had been burrowed, unburrow themselves. And you watch as they begin gathering in a group and slowly trudging south. Uh, well, th you notice uh, a couple of elementals that were planted into the face of a couple of the uh, rock faces of the low road down below, uh, about three of them. Uh, ones Hasbar did not see due to the distance uh, and began following along the path. So, uh, I just want to make sure no one does anything or slips and another set of acrobatics check. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, y'all are really good at these. Twenty-six. Twenty? Twenty-seven. Uh, seven. <laughs> Better for me. Uh-oh. Yeah, me too. Oh, I miss it. Yeah, that's better than a four. Six. One, seven. I don't get a bonus for no. No, we're not climbing. Sorry, I was yeah. And back. don't worry, I'm using the group's averages. It's not just the end of. It's not just one individual's bad roll. It's whether or not if there's an average, and then if their rolls can detect the average. Uh, which is to say, this I think the, is the lowest average you guys have ever had. Uh, it started real strong and then it just sort of tapered off at the end to be incredibly just normal. <laughs> well, in, in comparison to everything else you guys have been doing. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, the average is an 18. That's within their range, like to be reasonable. So let's see if they can actually see. Let's see if I can roll any one of those 19s I just dropped. <laughs> I hope uh, not. Nope, that's a 14 and a 4, and uh, let's see if number 3 is the unlucky dice. And that's a 5. Phew. There is a moment where, uh, walking along, uh, shuffling on this narrow pathway, uh, Tajira takes a step and it breaks loose underneath, and there's a long moment where someone's arm just sort of reaches out and catches Tajira and balances her, and everyone remains completely still. Waiting to see if the elementals react. And they keep on marching. Whew. Didn't even get... 14 was the highest, and primordials are not good at observing things. Thankfully. Not these, anyway. You managed to, with only a narrow issue arising get past and through this particular uh, escapade where there were unfortunately no super saiyans waiting in the sun <laughs> <laughs> well there might have been we didn't notice <laughs> or they didn't notice us Okay. As um, powerful as Super Saiyans are, they don't seem especially observant. <laughs> I mean, that's fair, actually. <laughs> um, Hazard, uh, roll me a d6, please. Those on hand at all times. It's a five. 
A five, everybody. All right, it's not a three at least, so it should be something different. Oh, okay, that one's interesting. Oh no. All right, that should be great fun. Pardon me, I'm excited. I am too. Um, Kyle, uh, roll me a d20. You know what, we're gonna roll with this one. How much worse it's an can it get? It's an eight. All right, all right. Could be way worse, could be way worse. After you have successfully passed that area, you continue to hike for another two to three hours, fording through all the snow, your guide helping making sure no one gets lost, when eventually you come to another flat expanse. Snow halts you all, and then gets you very low to the ground and just sort of points. Now don't let this fool you. This is all frozen water. And I realize you would think in these temperatures, you wouldn't have to worry about it. But that is because there are things that hide beneath the ice. Oh, I knew it. You cannot see it. But there is something out there. We do not know exactly what it is or where it has come from, but I have heard many reports of something black and ooze-like that has taken with it many a guide and runner. This is where your advice will be valuable. You look like you've seen some things in your experience in your travels. Do any of you know of any creatures such as this? What kind of check would that be? Uh, an arcana or a religion check? For anyone that wants to make it. Oh, beans, let's try it out. I mean, there's no... Beans, I got a five. You don't know anything that sounds like that. Sounds like my life. Oh. <laughs> I got a an 11. Also, it doesn't sound like anything you've heard. I mainly deal with killing people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's completely fair. But then you Damn. also don't know anything. But but I rolled so high for me. You did, but unfortunately the DC is uh, higher than an 18. That's stupid. It is, I'm sorry. So, I have a... Uh technical question because I've never used this uh, spell before which is true seeing okay it says you can see into the ethereal plane does that mean you can see something like this beneath the ice uh well those are, I mean first of all those are two different things uh the ethereal plane doesn't allow you to see like past objects it would allow you to see into the ethereal plane that would be overlapped with this particular location if it's form of travel happened to be through using that then yes it would allow you to see it okay um but it is not x-ray vision at least i don't think it is nope i say that out loud um, there's actually a definition for it in the dmg yeah it's like well, double let check me, let me go double gives check. quite a bit of stuff but it is yeah it is checking. a lot of it is a lot of things i just don't know if it is yeah. exactly uh X-ray vision. Yeah, I don't uh, think it is. But what would this be under? Like I'm looking, I'm looking in the in the index, and it's just like true sight's just not here. So like, what would it be under? Vision. Um, Visibility. I couldn't tell you for sure, but I'm just going to look uh, it up on the interwebs. Senses in. Um... In the monster manual. I draw I'm with true sight can out to a specific range, see in normal and magical darkness, see invisible creatures and objects, automatically detect visual illusions, and succeed on saving throws against them, and perceive the original form of a shape changer or a creature that is transformed by magic. Furthermore, the creature can see into the ethereal plane. So no, no x-ray vision there. Well, there we go. 
Okay, I was curious because I have never used it. There will come a time. Yay. But now is not that time. I mean, it could be, but that's up to you. Uh, so were you going to make a check? Sajira? You're the only person I don't have a number from yet. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, that's an... That was four... Well, either way, it's an 11. All right. None of you seem to have any knowledge of what on this particular Earth it could be. Um, but I guess, let's see, uh, Snow just doesn't know. Let's see if the Handmaiden does. We don't know what the Handmaiden can do. <laughs> no, we don't. Apparently, go the distance. Wow. Uh, natural 18. Um, hey girl. That's, uh, 27 total, so yeah, that would do it. Uh... I suppose after a brief moment of contemplation as everyone is considering their vast, uh, you know, memories of knowledge of creatures and things they've seen, uh, the Handmaiden will uh, briefly speak up. Um, I have heard of creatures from the Merc that are called Tar Spawn. They are one of the various infiltrators that uh, Hora, um, the, the shade, sends to this plane of existence. It is less for information gathering and more for preventing uh, those that would gather information uh, from reaching their destinations. That would imply that Pora believes there is something worthwhile stopping people from reaching beyond at least this particular pathway. There could be more dotted throughout uh, Eridu, and I suspect there would be. They are humanoid in shape. Uh, they fight with weapons and wear armor. They can uh, apply uh, adhesive to individuals. Uh, that uh, can stick you to yourself or, or to other surroundings. They are unnaturally perceptive and fast, uh, and they fight with a ferocity that is uh, equal to that of a lichen. That all sounds lovely. <sighs> then I think we ought to be careful. Mm-hmm. So, uh, has anyone had any luck sneaking across the ice without being noticed? I mean, I have as an individual, but the, the, it was with a couple of close calls. It is, uh, very, very smart, and uh, I think it can listen through the vibrations in the ice. Okay. But that's all uh, relatively secondhand. I didn't stick around too long. Uh, and truth be told, I used a, a bit of my um, my natural magic to uh, encourage my exit. Martel shrugs and says, I, I mean, I should be fine. Won't be able to hear me. I think I'll be okay, but, you know, that might just be confidence talking. Well, I know that I'm heavy. But... So, I won't. Unless you can carry me, huh? I really wish I could, Lithian. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yes, she's quite the comedian. 
Well, well we I can think always... it's the same strategy as before. I say yes. we be cautious for as far as we can. And if we have to fight, we will. <clears throat> if I may, I have a suggestion uh, in case we deem uh, the creature to be too difficult to just walk past. We could bait it out into the open and I can banish it back to the murk. Um, Martel smiles at the hat maiden. <laughs> oh, that is a good plan. I I like that plan. That plan sounds a lot less deathy. Yes. Mm. Oh, <clears throat> as uh fancy as that sounds, I still tend to uh, err against the side of if we don't have to fight, uh, uh, we shouldn't. Just in case there's more than one, I agree. Uh, yeah, yes, that's what I was thinking. There could be three or four for all we know. No one's ever really survived an encounter long enough to, to, to count. Hmm. Well, we draw it out because we don't sneak well. At least we have a banishing option. Yes, it, she'll keep it ready just in case. Hopefully. Kind of. Like, I know you can't actually keep spells ready, but you know what I mean. She doesn't say anything. The handmaid just remains, remains completely quiet. Well, I guess if that's the plan, let us keep moving, yes? Yes. Yeah. Martel just nods, choosing to begin to be silent. Mm -hmm. And because it seems like a very dramatic place to end at, so you can all potentially suffer over the course of the next week, everyone roll stealth checks. Yay, stealth. I'm gonna use my last piece of whatever it's called, inspiration. 29. Yay. 32. Oof. 19 for Martel. Oh, wait, hold on. That's not... Might not be correct. No, it is not. Sorry. I just remembered why I have shoes that give me advantage. Uh, mm -hmm. so I, was like, I don't get advantage on this, I don't think. And then, and yes, yes, I do. Uh, 29. Oh, that's very bad. Yeah! <laughs> well, my first roll was in that one. Mm -hmm. I used inspiration. Mm -hmm. So now I'm a little of 14. Mm. Jira? Oh, I thought I said 23. Oh, I, I missed. A lot of people talk. Um. Wow. Uh, snow, and snow tied with lithium. Oh, no. Uh, but, I mean, we had a lot of big, chunky numbers in here, though, so let's, uh, let's see what your average is. I think this is the highest yet, to be honest with you. Yeah. Okay, no, it equals out for the for the highest. Uh, the numbers are just spread out a little bit differently. All right, so for next week, your average stealth for uh, the first leg of this encounter is a 23. It's good. All right. I'll be testing all of my d20s through the week to see which one rolls my favorite <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that is uh, it, though, for this week. Um, that's where we're going to stop. Hey, chat. Thanks for hanging out. Hanging out. Love you guys. Mm -hmm. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're, you're all doing that while I still have to hit the stop button when I'm in the middle of saving a document. So you guys just gotta have to all awkwardly own up to that. <laughs> I'm not. I haven't said goodbye. I just, I'm just expressing appreciation. I oh yeah, no, but everyone else after though. After CJ's done, yeah, he's got to do his. I have outro. a spiel. Yeah, come on. Um, Professionalism, guys. Nope, that, there's none here. <laughs> we, <laughs> have, we haven't set up rules. There is no rules yet. Fine, I will actually write.
a little prompt and send it to all of you this week about how intros and outros are going to be framed. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> for someone in show business, you don't pick up on cues very well, Kyle. Rude. <laughs> No, this, this is exactly why you waited so long to introduce us to them. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah this you're is it. Absolutely right. We're a hot mess. <laughs> okay. Um, it took me forever to actually just type out the, the file save name because you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Silliness uh, aside, um, that's it for us this week uh, with. The convergence campaign um i hope you guys enjoyed uh what i'm trying to do here with uh this mappy bit thing um i hope it works out i'm trying to keep like things a bit more streamlined i want to get some more variety into the roles though um you're welcome to talk to me and spitball that with me uh, all week if you have any ideas or suggestions i will happily take them same for anyone that's watching because there are a bunch of you that are watching but none of you are talking so i'm glaring at you um oh my cam hasn't been on that's awkward um I was glaring at the webcam, but clearly no one saw it. Um, next week, we're going to find out if uh, the party can manage to slip by, apparently, some sort of crazy tar demon shadow monster from the Merc. Um, who knows how that's going to work out. It's going to be something, I can tell you that much. Um, otherwise, uh, the same thing uh, every week, Tuesdays uh, at... Uh, 1 p.m. PDT is the Moonrise campaign. Uh, and we're going through a bit of a shakeup with them right now, but it's going to be for the better. Um, Wednesday, very early still, is 7 a.m. PDT is the Orphan Honor game. Uh, and they're, they're steamrolling straight into their uh, their their first, uh, what is going to be the first boss battle shortly. Uh, they don't know that, but I do. <laughs> um, um Thursday, as always, uh, I'm a player over at Crack DM. Uh, go check that out. It's been a lot of fun. It's getting very dramatic. Uh, very honestly, compared to my game, I feel like it's way more soap opera y, uh, but in a good way. Uh, and so that's a great deal of fun. Um, I'd even recommend if, if any of you guys ever have any spare time on Thursday night, except for you, Kara, because I know maybe Critical Role, if you had time, you actually watch that instead of me. So that's reasonable. Anyone else, if you're not watching Critical Role, go look at that. I doubt it. Um, and, you know, for anyone that happens to have any uh, sponsorship connections, we're not sponsored, but I'd happily be. I still haven't turned my webcam back on, but I'm absolutely, like, talking to it way too much. Um. Anyway, uh, that's about all I got. Um. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks to you guys for playing. Uh, I love you all. Uh, I love D&D, &D, and, so, and so this is so much fun to always be able to do all the time. Um. For those of you that watch, uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, even though I, you know, I, I'm being antagonistic towards you about being quiet, uh, it, it's still just great that you're here watching. I hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, uh, that's it from us. Uh, and now officially, everyone can say their awkward goodbyes uh, because that's us signing off. Um, and when you know you can do nothing else, make good choices. Good night, everybody. Uh, I don't want to. I don't have to now. I've already done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh.